Good luck to the FF6 runners for Team Hombury. Uh, oh, Dine. Good luck, Dine. All right, meanwhile, it's Sounds like starting that, yeah. Yeah, start into that the chaos, chaos fight. fight. Donswig taking a little bit of a different approach, putting that uh, red mage up front to have him take any of those punches, uh, hopefully to avoid his uh, fighter dying. Once he, once the red mage gets off those fast spells, he doesn't have a whole lot to do. He's done anything he's going to do that's a significant amount of damage. He can throw out some heals, but not a lot. And some decent damage on Chaos from Zwanzig, so kind of a little, probably close to 600 damage on the previous turn. Uh, Shenzel gets an unfortunate uh, strike first from the enemies, but gets out of there without much trouble, fortunately. And there you go. Done. Team Mob, go ahead and start for FF6. Denzel's going to finish up this fight, and then he's going to start the preparation for getting his red mage turned to stone. And then it's uh, off to the races for the final bosses. Keen mentioning in chat, he just forgot to heal before chaos. <laughs> All right. Always heal before chaos, people. Always heal before chaos. All right. Uh... Let's see. So Shenzel's next fight is with the Gurmedusas. All right, his next next fight. So. Oh yeah. So because Shenzel didn't pick up the Sun Sword, he's basically still on the world record route for the path through Temple of Fiends. So he didn't have to do the eight resets. So I think that might be why he didn't pick up the Sun Sword. So by picking up the Sun Sword, because you take all those extra steps, you do... It does end up making it so that you really do have to do the eight resets. Before the Temple of Fiends dive. So without that, uh, I think she ends up... Um, just kind of maintain the, the usual uh, dive into Temple of Fiends. Alright, so he is hoping that the Gurmedusa is... Yeah, there it goes. All right. Perfect. Yep, there you go. Alright, so while we do have time, uh, do the commentators for FF6 to introduce themselves. Well, I guess it's me and B-Dude. B-Dude, do you want to introduce yourself? Hey guys, I'm, uh, I'm B-Dude. Great Just to have you. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Going to be going with uh, Pat here later on, so it should be a good time. Pharaoh might be joining us later on here. Nice. The FF6 is being run on the Pixel Remaster. So, uh, not the NES, uh, SNES. So we have moved on to the Pixel Remaster for FF6. This is your favorite version of FF6. Isn't that correct, B-Dude? That is correct. <laughs> All right, so Shane's all moving on to uh, Carrie's floor. And how long is the intro for FF6? It's an intro cutscene here. B dude, do you happen to know? I think it's like four and a half minutes, almost five. It's right. about it four, like minutes, four minutes, twenty, depending on your computer strength, I guess, but like about four minutes, twenty six, twenty seven seconds, give or take. All right. And Dine just kind of hopped into the menu. What, what exactly was he doing there? Uh, he basically set it up so that we go on very fast battle speed. Uh, this is just going to make the ATB roll by really quick. Um, memory cursor and very fast on the 
message speed in battle, just so that we're not sitting there watching text go by really slowly. Uh, going through this little bit here, we're just uh, trying to make sure that question mark girl gets all of our experience, making sure that the other guys run away. Unlike the SNES, you can't run away at the end of the battle, so we have to make them run away before everything dies. That's basically all we're going to be doing for this little walk. I should point out for Shenzel, uh, his route being different still, uh, because of the changes in that he's got to make, he didn't have the steps to go get that pro cape. So he went straight to carry. And taking her down with no trouble at all. I think his cane has proved uh, you don't actually need the pro cape. Uh, aside from that healing before chaos. I'm or, yeah, pro, pro cape, cape. healing, <laughs> yeah. That's, what do you do? Yes, yes. You don't need either of those things. No. Just YOLO, you're good to go. Alright, so a uh, couple encounters for Shinzo on the Kraken 2 floor, giving me Sea Shrine Pile of Pain. Um, you know, and at this point, these encounters, the only thing they're going to do is slow you down. You don't need any of them. Uh, you're just going to run away. Uh, they can hardly hurt you. Sh short of a crit, you might use a heal potion or two. Mm-hmm. So, this one, the Gershark with Sahag, you're hoping you don't get the full field, but usually you're going to get the full field here. And then uh, the next one will be the Gershark Big Eye fight, and then after that he'll get into Kraken 2. Getting away from that one right away was nice. Yeah. All right, so he is going to move his second fighter beneath the red mage to make sure that any punches go onto the guy with the defense sword up. So I'm going to start out with uh, defense and ruse. Very oh, unlucky terrifying. hit on the ruse. Yes. Oof. Okay, that's not great, but it's better than hitting uh, our other fighter. Yeah. Kraken 2, very punchy on uh, Chainzel here. Alright, so he's using a Cure 2 just to give some extra HP. With two ruses, it's very unlikely Kraken can one-shot him, but yeah, it's uh, still a risk, so it's worth the heals. Mm -hmm. Alright, so he's moving on to actually doing the fighting with the second fighter. The first fighter is still healing the other one. Three hits good. for 333. Really yeah. good hit there. All right. So now both fighters up above 200 HP. Uh, looking a little bit... Fa uh, yeah, not uh, nearly good. as terrifying. <laughs> yes, there you go. Yeah. Got about 500 damage. So with any luck, this is the last round right here. No. Ooh. <laughs> I can get in the crit. Come on, take him out. Oh, that's that's, that's okay. Bad, but it's it's time consuming to heal him, but we got through it. Yeah. All right. So he Shinzo's lost one fighter. Um, he can take the uh, the second fighter here and just kind of do the next floor solo, and um, then. I think the and worms would really scare the me. But... Red Mage, and then um, he uh, revived the first fighter at the same time. Sure. Is this route get the? All right. Let me let me see if this route actually gets the worms. Possible this one doesn't actually get the worms. Oh right. Yeah, so he is doing the bouncing back and forth, right? So what he's doing with the bouncing back and forth is uh, trying to avoid getting the um, uh, sorcerer battles on Team at Two's floor. Alright, yeah. 
So as he goes back and forth between floors, it's, you're right next to the stairs. You're going to just do this to advance past wherever you need to be so that you can consecutively get encounters that are not sorcerers. Uh, there isn't anything else between any of these floors that's going to be more of a concern than those. Alright, so now this should be the dive. Uh, it looks like he does get one worm encounter, so it should be air elementals next, followed by rock goals. Alright. And then after that, the uh, unrunnable worm encounter, which... Yeah, with only, with only one fighter is actually a little bit scary. Uh, you do hope that you get enough damage on the worms to be able to one-shot them. Uh, I think it can also be, what, like three to four or two to four? Uh, uh, I think it's three so to four. Get... Yeah, you yeah. don't want four. So if, if you can avoid getting four, it's going to be a big difference. Yeah. Yeah, so heal him to full before he drops in. Nightmare evil man. All right. Maybe. And as long as they don't ambush, it's easy. Yeah. Oh, all right, yeah, maybe he doesn't get the... All right, yeah, so I think my notes are messed up, so I don't know what I'm looking at. Anyway, so hopefully <laughs> he doesn't get any of the... the one. Yes, so he's got the Masmune. He's going to soft up the uh, Red Mage, warp back. I was, uh, I was in suspense, because I wasn't sure either. <laughs> So he has revived the other fighter. Gonna heal him the fool. Use a lot of his heal potions. He's down to under 30. Um, should be enough to actually get through into the chaos fight. So. Yeah, it's really it's rare that because he's still got some cure spells too. It's rare that Tiamat's gonna do enough damage to impact the remaining of those the remainder of those heal potions. We'll check in where the Excal is. There's four chaos of fast, so we'll be able to um, use one here and still have uh, two for chaos and then one extra for the uh, emergency in case the slow two actually hits one of the fighters. It's a big hit on that you red mage. That's, that's not great. Yes, you do not want to see the red mage get hit. So he is using the defense sword to kind of protect against that. Hopefully Tiamat 2 can go down. Get there some good about hits. 750 damage on him so far. No one bane through the ribbon. No one bane no, through good. the ribbon. Yes. The next round of melee should end this year. As long as you get a reasonable hit off the mask. I mean, yeah, no problem. There you go. Nice. Little scary hit just to make us all clench. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's Temple of Fiends. You never stop clenching in Temple of no. Fiends. No. <laughs> Start to finish. Just full clench all the way. Alright, so I'm gonna heal everyone to full. Uh, moving the Red Mage up. Red Mage only really needs to get off the two fast spells, and then after that, uh, the Red Mage can die. Uh, you really want to make sure if anyone's getting punched that um especially because chaos has a stun touch and this is where also, the one of the, one of the oh, fighters didn't have the ribbon on for tiamat too oh wow <laughs> yeah so i think bane is poison though and i think that fighter did oh have the Aegis shield. i think it was like head on the Aegis shield yeah yeah All right, here we go, fasting up both of the fighters. Okay, I'll start with a punch. You just don't want to see the spells. Uh, the more spells he uses, the faster he's going to get to Cure 4, which we really don't want to see. 
Right, so I think uh, just... Lion is running for Team Choco, so Lion, go ahead and get ready. Really would like to see more damage out of the yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. Yeah, I got crit by that ice too. It's a 3 in 256 chance of the spells critting through the ribbon. A big hit there. 345. Yeah, I nice see. That second fighter just hanging in there. The slow two proc. And there you go, time. Go Fantastic. ahead, Lion. Great job, everybody. Nice. Excellent work. It's a lot of fun. Very happy to see everybody actually make it through the end of the fight. And Chainzel putting up at 3.13 time was uh, pretty fantastic. Nice run, Chainzel. That was fantastic. Great run, everybody. Guys, thanks for having yeah, me. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for helping me out here, Avin. Good doing the commentary with you. And... Uh, yeah, let's, I guess, move over to FF6. All, all right. I'll see you all around. Take care, everybody. So, haven't done too much. You're going to see Lion do it here. We talked a little bit about the walk. Uh, then, basically, they did the well kill. We'll get to that when Lion gets to that. But other than that, we can catch up with uh, Dain and Muchiha here. Just making it to Figaro Castle. Going to be hitting a little bit of uh, Exposition Center here. Uh, the only thing that really needed to happen was... You sometimes get an encounter on the way to Figaro Castle. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. So, so we don't have a step route in this game. Uh, you just kind of get what you get. Sometimes you can get absolutely no encounters. Sometimes you can get one in the forest, or you can get one in uh, in the desert. The desert one can be a little bit scary, because you can get one of the enemies, the, uh, the scorpions that can cast Numb, which uh, puts slow on you. No, not slow, stop on you. And then you just have to kind of sit there and uh, watch stuff happen for a bit, which is awesome. So, like we said before, the opening cutscene we cannot skip. Well, we can't skip in a, in a glitchless run. We've actually found with a, a resized glitch that you can skip the opening cutscene along with a few other things. Buffflax has been working on that. That's with our uh, PR resize glitch but uh since we're not doing that we do have to watch the four minutes and 20 some odd seconds uh you'll see with the so one thing we get in the pr here is all the prs give you a sprint button so that's why we're actually able to get ahead of mog or lock as you uh see dine doing here uh this is going to stack with the sprint shoes later on which uh which means we get to go with 4x speed so 4x speed, especially in 5 and 6, I find, is pretty funky to try and deal with. Because it doesn't sound like it's that fast, but once you start hitting angles and then you need to try and like get into a door, you'll see probably more than once every single runner is going to miss a door. And you're just... I'll try not to point it out too much, but it is pretty funny when you just see someone trying to miss a door and they go left side of the door, right side of the door, left side of the door, and you're like, okay, hang on, just need to take the finger off the button for a real quick second. Uh, you all notice that we're playing in 16 by 9 the game does offer that. It also offers 4 by 3 I know Dine likes to play in 4 by 3 so he's getting used to the 16x9 uh, uh, line, I think, as well. The only real advantage that we've noticed is on poltergeist later on in the run you can actually see the cursor that goes on poltergeist otherwise you kind of just get a little more field of vision the menus do feel a little bit wider a little more full but other than that there's nothing that's really different about it there you can see moochie hall just running in front of lock as well we can kind of just bump in front of him saves a little bit of time the, the big time saves that we'll find in PR over SNES, despite the fact that we... 
don't have step route. We don't have scripted boss fights. Uh, we do have, like we said, the sprinting. We have instant text, and we also have auto battle, which you're going to see Diane using here right away. Auto battle increases the battle speed by 50%. Um, because we play on very fast, what usually happens in the Super Nintendo version, why we always play on the slowest... Oh, Terry eating it there is always unfortunate. Uh, when you're playing on... So we play on the slowest battle speed in SNES because it only affects the enemy's ATB. And the player always plays at the same speed whether you're playing fast or slow. In the PRs, it affects everybody's ATB. So what that means is, is we're going to see a lot more of the nasty attacks from the enemies. Uh, things are going to be flying through a lot more. So the fights get a whole lot more inconsistent. You get to see a lot more of the boss's nasty stuff happening. Even regular encounters, actually. Uh... So that's going to be great. Uh, one thing you'll notice, just dying going here, we do have the Mode 7 Chocobo walk, but we uh, we opt to go with the 2D version because for some reason, on the Chocobo walk, if you're going in Mode 7, they made the hitbox extremely large. So you end up ping-ponging around everywhere. But if you change it back to the 2D version, then uh, you seem to hit stuff a whole lot less. You'll notice it more on the walk to Zozo. So Dine's going to be looking and hopefully he gets a, a couple of fights in here. Just at least one for money. Because we're going to need to buy some sprint shoes. Uh, you'll notice we don't get a lot of encounters in this game. Uh, it feels like you get about half the encounters of what you get in SNES. So that's not overall a bad thing. Except for in spots like Mount Colts, where we're actually going to want to get encounters. Uh, especially when you're looking for bigger packs. The game seems to not want to give you bigger packs. Unless you really don't need the big packs anymore. Then it seems to want to give that to you. But, uh... It's all good. We'll, we'll get there when we get there. So like I said, we're going to be getting the sprint shoes. And now you're going to see Dine really zooming. And uh, from this point on, we bought three sprint shoes, and we're going to be having a sprint shoe on anyone pretty much at any point in the run. Uh, looking on Lion's screen here, you'll see he makes Terra defend, because we were saying about how you uh, can't have someone run away at the end of a fight, which is a little bit of a different from SNES as well. Uh, so we have to A, let the... he's sitting in his, uh, his menu right here, letting the battle queue empty, since... With the uh, auto battle, and we were talking about with the enemies getting really fast ATB, uh, you can get stuck in a bit of a cycle with like three or more enemies. If you just sit there trying to run, because one will attack and while you're trying to run, the next one will get ATB and then it'll attack. So what you have to do is sit inside your menu, make sure that they all empty out their, their attacks, and then you actually will have the ability to run, since you're not just busy getting pummeled on. Uh, looking on Tomberry, so we're going to be trying to get... Trying to get Edgar to level 10, Locke to level 9, and Terry to level 8. This is to make sure that Savin joins our party at level 2. Or, not level 2. It's going to be... <laughs> definitely not level 2. Level 10. Let's try level 10. 11. It's actually 11. Never mind. I don't know... Sorry, guys. It's been a it's been a long weekend. <laughs> it's going to join at 11. And so a little bit of extra grinding here just means that we have a little bit of less grinding to do later on. With the uh, Gigas Armlet that we got, Edgar should be able to basically one-shot everything but the... But the Mammoths. I'm not used to the, the PR names, I'm used to the, the SNES names because I'm a boomer. The... The brawlers that he's fighting aren't horrible. They're easy to, to kill in one shot. The mammoths, even though they take more than one attack, they actually give pretty good experience. So it's like you get a little extra experience for a little less time save on it. So it's... I'm not sure if it's actually more efficient or not, but it is a... is a thing to look for. Now these trilliums are notorious for the... For the Bane Touch, which uh, Poison is...
quite detrimental in in six. It uh, does like a percentage of your HP per step. So if Dine were to take like ten steps with that poison on, you'd be sitting at like one HP. And we do not have Phoenix Downs or a way to raise anybody right now. So we're gonna have to make sure that uh, nobody hits the ground here. Another small change here is uh, we actually have to wait to watch Vargas get on the screen, and we think it's because of the 4x speed that we have. That it's so that we don't actually beat him to the to the cave, because it does actually seem like it is possible. Alright, so Terra hit 8 there, so that actually wasn't uh, horrible. Mount Colts. Sometimes you have to do a little bit of a run back and forth in front of Vargas. Just to uh, get that extra little bit of level, but... Looks like we got everything needed. Uh, we'll probably see on Muchiha's screen here, he's gonna try and have Locke run away just to get the extra experience on on uh, Edgar and Terra since we kind of hit our levels a little bit easier that way. The uh, the fight that we're doing on Tomberry, pretty simple, try and kill the, kill the bears at the same time. If you leave one alive and then you attack him last, he does get a death counter-attack. Which uh, is a new thing they added, but I don't know why they don't do it if they're both of them die at the same time and Locke takes a dirt nap, but that's alright by this point. If anybody else died, we'd have to take a rest at the... Actually, I think they changed that now in the... in the PR. We're, uh, return is hideout. SNES, you did have to take a, a rest at the inn, but I believe they actually changed that now in, uh, in the PR. One other thing they changed here is uh, you can't just do a single pummel on Vargas and finish the fight. Uh, depending on, I think, when you actually push this phase, uh, you either have to go Aura Bolt, Pummel, Pummel, or sometimes you can get away with an Aura Bolt and then just one Pummel. Depends on when the prompt shows up. So you'll see the little prompt show up here. And now, after we've used two blitzes, the game goes, hey, you should use a blitz. Use this one. We're like, we did use that one, but only you gotta use it again. So, we use it again. Pretty simple very fight annoying. overall. <laughs> that is a very annoying mechanic. I'm really sure why the game did that. It, uh, it puts a lot of confusion on a, a first-time player when they're like, I, I did use the Blitz. What do you mean, use the Blitz? I guess I'll use it again. Oh yeah, pretty simple. You'll see uh, Lion here is just grinding Terra up to level 6. Takes 4 fights in this walk here, and that makes it so that Locke joins uh, plus 2 levels. So he joins at 8 instead of 7. It's a, there's a whole bunch of like early stuff like that, and then after that, uh, basically after we're dying, gets through the the river here, we're pretty much done for grinding for a good hour and a half. Uh, one little thing you'll also notice on Lion's thing here, he's going to be able to actually auto battle through this little cutscene fight. There's a couple of them where you can do that, and a couple where you can't. I'm not really sure what the game constitutes for uh, picking and choosing, but we'll take it every time we can. I'm gonna have a turret check the desk, the table. Okay, so we're grabbing pretty much everything inside Returner's Hideout here, except this one little antidote. 
And then there is like a green cherry over in the little armor piece over here. Let's see if Dine goes for the piece of paper or not. Aw, oh, he doesn't. Okay, that's fine. There's a little piece of paper that you can uh, grab. And uh, it just adds a little funny cutscene just in the next little bit that we're going to do here. Did it's it for sad. the ESA run. Yeah, it's a marathon run. Come on, man. Come on, Dine. He suplexes the train, but he doesn't go for the paper. I'm going to have a talking with him later. Oof. Well, as long as he gets googly eyes, I think I'll forgive him for this. But if you grab that little piece of paper right here, Bannon will just be like, what is this doing here? He'll go throw it inside that little urn in the back there. And then and then life continues on like normal. Uh, going to line here because I didn't really get to talk about it. So we actually fight these enemies because the NPCs move quite a bit slower in this version. There is a bug if you try and push directly into where they are. You can actually activate the fight again. So you'll see he does a little bit of a shimmy away from it to make sure that we don't activate the fight. Because you can get it upwards of like three, four times if you keep pushing into him. Which can get a little annoying because we don't really want to fight him to begin with. So he also takes off all the equipment from Mog before he gets into the martial fight. Whereas in you know, the, the SNES version, he actually does that inside the martial fight to take off the Mithril shield and also grab the the Mithril pike, I think. Yeah, do, just doing the, the unequipped there is a little bit faster than trying to do it inside battle. And then here, because we're going to be doing dance, uh, it just feels a little bit quicker. Mm -hmm. Because uh, kind of the mantra that you have for uh, for PR is if you're not auto battling, you're losing time. So you're trying to do as ooh, double Caven is unfortunate. Caven is the only thing that's not going to kill Marshall here. All right. We did get the will will o wisp. That one. That one. So, right, I was hoping we got to see a poisonous frog today, but nope. That's like a one in sixteen chance. So, dying going through the Elite River here. Everyone's going to be doing this, but trying to push a bunch of experience to definitely Edgar. Sabin was going to get a little bit as well. Uh, if he gets to level 12, it makes the Imperial Camp a little bit better. Uh, Edgar, we're going to try and get to... Actually, I think they changed this up a little bit. This game has been going through a lot of reroutes over the past two, three weeks. But I think we're still kind of trying to get an Edgar to 13, if possible, just for uh, the minecart section. Looks like he's full sending at this point. The the lesser low pros here are the big experience givers. So that's usually the ones where you're going to try and siphon any experience if you do siphon any. Mm-hmm. Uh, the yeah, Edgar, the one encounter Edgar here only needed less than 100 HP before the next battle, so that's why I, I'm pretty sure that's why he just left everybody there. Yeah, I think he was actually talking about how I, he doesn't siphon it to anybody else after like the first three battles or something like that now. Let's see what Muchiha actually does here. Like I said, everyone's running kind of the same route, but they've all put their little flair for preferences on it, so it's going to be interesting to see how they kind of roll with it, and it also kind of depends on what the game just kind of gives you. So that uh, will change some decisions as well. Didn't really see a lion's walk, but I saw he didn't get stopped in the desert, so it must have been a good enough walk. Alright, Dine has uh, been opting to change for a gauntlet setup on Edgar. We used to have a bit of a... We used to go with Gauntlet Edgar, and then we went to Auto Crossbow Edgar for Ultros, and then I think we're kind of going back to Gauntlet Edgar just for for battle speed, and Ultros isn't scripted like he is in SNES, but he's also not not scripted. We, we do get to see uh, a lot more party-wide attacks and such with it, but the only part you're really super worried about is after he does his party wide tentacle. You're hoping he doesn't do a, a singular tentacle on Bannon as well because then then you lose and then you have to do it again. 
That's pretty much the only main worry. So, Edgar getting hit with... with the ink there is actually super unfortunate because physical evasion actually works in this version. So, let's see if he opts yeah, for just changing it rough. to a... Yeah, I think he's probably going to opt for it because, like I said, it actually works. And you're probably only going to hit, like, half of your hits. And considering that we're only going to be attacking with uh, Edgar and Sabin here, that it's super... It's about a difference of about 30-40. So I think it can save you, like, a turn. The only thing that's a little bit worrisome here now is just the fact that Edgar is in the front row, so he's going to take more damage off of Tentacles. I've got Bannon there to do the praise, so that should help oh. a bit. So one fun thing about just swapping from, because you'll have like your one list of attacks where you have like attack and then you'll have like magic and item and whatever else. Uh, if you're on the second slot and you hit right to go to it, it'll bring you to row. Every other slot will bring you to defend. So I think that's what happened to to dine there with uh, Bannon and why he put Bannon in the front row and I'm pretty sure he could feel uh, feel the pressure a little bit. This oh, it's gone a little should... rough for Dine there. I think another round or so and he should be done. I wasn't counting damage, but... Uh... Bannon's just in there holding things together. There oh, we go. Man. Wasn't That's even me. worried. <coughs> Easy game. Easy game. So there is actually a little bit of a bug here. I've noticed it with a... So I use an auto clicker in this, and uh, if you have the auto clicker going at like a specific time, Sabin won't actually jump into the water and he'll stay on... He'll stay on the raft. Until the point where he needs to jump in the air, and then he just jumps in the air off of off of the raft and just kind of flies off to he's gotta go save his people. Let's see Moochie Goodbye, Haas here. Seven. Goodbye. Should go a little bit smoother because A he's not Oh, it actually is like a hundred damage difference with the with the gauntlet. And a faster animation. While Dines is doing a little bit of walking in next position, we'll see how Moose fight goes. It doesn't really matter if Terra dies or not, she... well, okay. Assuming that Edgar and Savin don't die, it doesn't matter if Terra dies. Now, seeing how uh, Dines fight goes, it does matter if she dies. <laughs> Moose fight looking uh, a whole lot smoother. And there you go. Able to get through it with no one dying. Also, you see Dines skipped p picking up um, Shadow. So, just moves straight down into the army camp here, the, uh, the army base. Yeah, we kind of know. so having more people in your party makes manually running away a lot tougher. And since we have auto battle, it kind of, well, actually you're going to see a fun little strat. Hopefully we get to see a fun little strat we get to use in uh, the Imperial camp here. That uh, basically makes Shadow obsolete. But it uh, all kind of depends on this next fight and what drop you get. You have a 7 8 chance of getting what we want, but... Uh, you seem to get that 1 8 more than you think you should. Marathon luck? What do we think? I think he'll get it. I believe. Totally not because he's on my team. So same thing that we do in SNES, we're going to use uh, the Sky or the Retort ability. Oh, he got the fun, fun little glitch Ooh. there where uh, it luckily he didn't get countered there, and he did get the black belt. So nice. there, there's a little bit of a thing where if you get your ATB when you get countered, the game counters it cues you up for another attack, so you're not actually in your counter state anymore. It's a, it's a bit of a weird situation. You, You'll notice it in a few other situations as well, like if Celis gets her turn 
when you're doing runic, then she'll get out of her ready stance, and she's not actually able to runic anymore. Uh, which is kind of a reason why we don't use runic too much anymore. Also, the fact that we just kind of go f a lot more offense. But that black belt that we got is going to make this Imperial camp hopefully really fun and quick. Uh, it ends up raising our counterattacks rate by like 75%. Now, Dyne doesn't have that good of luck with it sometimes, and he'll watch like 10 attacks hit him and like one will counter. But uh, in theory, you can go through this really quick. Getting the counters, especially in the PR, should really help out a lot. Also, Muchiha was able to get the black belt as well. So I'm glad you know that. So we'll be putting on this black belt here right away. Uh, these couple of fights here, nothing really matters. And since uh, like we can get attacked a couple of times, Dine may opt for a potion because you can still get beat up pretty good in this next fight. And we are going to be putting them into the front row. Oh, he remembered. I was getting worried for a second. So there's a question in chat about whether it matters what order you do the scenarios in. And uh, I think uh, the reason why we do this one is so that we can get the smoke bombs to be able to run away more quickly than the others. Is, is that still right for the PR? That's definitely why we do it for... Yeah. Yeah, that and this... Okay, he didn't get the counter. Okay, that was a little dicey. Uh, we do seven scenario first for smoke bombs, and then we do Terra scenario because Edgar has some stuff that we want to put onto lock for lock scenario. So we're gonna go and strip everything off of him, and then lock scenario is the last one that we're gonna end up doing. A little bit different than SNES, but that's just because we can't manipulate the river in Terra scenario. So we're gonna get all three fights on the river regardless, and that's basically the only reason why we do Terra scenario last in SNES. But the smoke bombs is the big, big thing. Yeah. Also, as someone pointed out in chat, you know, if you if you do save in scenario first, you get to suplex the chain the train more quickly, which is always nice. Let's see, if we, there is a bit of a an ATB bug that you can get. It seems if you counter when uh, your ATB bar is filled, you can get like three attacks off. It's a. Uh, it's pretty weird. It's almost like it's a double counter. Kind of like you like. I've seen where you can get like two, three attacks off, and you're like, "All right, Saban, go ahead, do your thing." And then you also get hit a whole bunch less since uh, Saban can kill the. The brown guards in one attack, and then the, I think the cadets, the cadets in two. Which, uh, we're not gonna see those guys, or well, the cadets anymore. Uh, there is a stronger version of them coming up, though. But, uh, we're also gonna have Cyan kind of on the team. It's like Lion isn't having a terrible start to Mount Cold so far. Other than he might want to heal Terra here soon. There is a 1.7% chance that you get back attacked or pincered by a, a four pack, and that's always unfortunate. Dying healing up because uh, 20 HP is not going to get us very far. Black Belt not quite doing the work for Dine that uh, he's probably hoping. It's done a little bit, but it's not doing the 75% that it should be. I, I think he has the worst Black Belt luck. Just never counters when it should, huh? There we go. There you go. Alright. 
Also, Cyan doing a couple regular attacks in the first two encounters there, so he's not using any of his uh, special moves there, which is good. So Lion had Locke hit level 9 already, and he's just starting the, uh, the seashell room. So, uh, that means he... <laughs> Thanks, Locke. <laughs> Always missing. Alright, so that's most of the Imperial camp brought to you by uh, the Black Belt. Now, a fun thing is, when you're on these Magitek armors, you can't do physicals. Except if you have a Black Belt on and you get hit with a Metal Kick, you can still counter with a physical. Uh, that is a PR exclusive, and uh, there's been a whole bunch of fun little things like that that uh, kind of caught us off caught us off track here and there. Do another heal on Saban, just to make sure he gets through this. Yeah, so it seems like these next two fights are either a preempt or a back attack, more often than not. Yeah, ran out of high potions, had to dip down into regular potions in order to get the, or to get Cyan up to full. And, and there's one more counter for Dine in Imperial Base. So we got a uh, line here, just finishing up Vargas as well. Should be having a uh, seven pop in here right away. I'm hoping to see at least one person get the only two blitzes. Mostly because it just feels good. Because you, it just feels good knowing that you don't have to do as many blitzes because the game's like, all right, you know what? You kind of know what you're doing. It's got a five pack here. This is gonna be a little bit scary to try and run away from. Oh, never mind. So yeah, no when bad. you try to when you try to run away from a fight, uh, if so, say you're on Cyan's menu and Cyan runs away. If you're still trying to hold run, you actually won't get Savin's menu up until until you let off, which is kind of weird. So you have to actually, it's faster to run away by stop trying to run away, and then you can empty out that battle key we are talking about, and then you can run away. It's a little counterintuitive, but it's just because of the very fast speed and all the enemies just going to town on you if you, if you let them. Now, because we don't have smoke bombs, Seven Scenario in every single version is notorious for... Uh, RNG on the train and in the forest. Just just from the encounters. And because we have random encounters here, we can see some pretty nasty things. If we get like four angel whispers and we don't get a fast runaway, you're watching a lot of really slow gravities. Now, ideally... Okay, he is going for it. Ideally, Cyan dies. Now, this may seem like it's not a good idea. But... One person trying to run away from fights is so much faster than two people trying to run away from fights. Uh, there doesn't really seem like there's much of a run meter like there is in SNES. So people just kind of run away, which means the people that were originally slow at running away can be fast, and the people that were fast running away can be slow. And in an old route, we used to actually pick up the Hermes shoes early in South Figaro, and it always seemed like Sabin, the one with the Hermes shoes, is always the last to run away for some reason. And you're like, bro, you're the fastest one here, why are you not running away? We figure he's just making sure everyone goes and he can catch up.
So this fight that uh, Muchiha is at right now, usually it's kind of the scariest because you're hoping that you don't get a pincer on it. Just because it just seems to happen. And if you do get a pincer on it, when you already have a slow battle speed, you have a chance of seeing the enemies cast stop or their fire dance. Uh, here, it feels like it's almost turn one when they can start doing it because they start going so fast. So running away quick here is... It's so pivotal. This is a split where you canonically can either have a really good time or you can easily lose like two minutes. Little bit of a scary fight here just because the uh, the Oversoul can cast Dread, which uh, petrifies a character. And uh, at this point, that would be a GG's. Now, luckily, in the PRs, you basically get a an autosave every time you do a screen transition. So, in that sense, the run is a lot more marathon safe because if you die from whatever else, you're like, okay, well, I just basically start off in this room. There's a few spots where we're going to do a bit more safety saves or whatever else, like Floating Continent is basically one giant room, so you're going to do it a couple times there. Is it just me or is Dine taking a lot of damage? Dine is taking a lot of damage. <laughs> he has had to dip into his potions a lot so far in this run. And luckily, he's not even through the Phantom Trade. <laughs> luckily, he got a, a high pot drop from uh, the Magitek armors. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they were helping him out a bit there. Definitely needed. But he did make it to the train. We had our bumps and bruises along the way, but we did get here. Alright, dive on Okay, it was just a confuse. Nice. I thought that was going to be a berserk because his menu didn't pop up. And uh, that would be basically a reset try again. Yep. No suplex. No. He got slowed and he survived a Diabolical Whistle. I can tell him he's like, no, I'm out. I am full on out right now. Muchiha right now, dealing with the pincer though. Yeah, I know. That's a rough pincer. It's, uh... hmm. All right. Able to get through. He just had to take the fight rather than... Uh try to run away yeah I don't, I don't blame dine for not doing the suplex on that i wouldn't do wouldn't be doing the suplex on that either <laughs> as fun as it is let's see if uh Muchio has to deal with the oh no he gets to deal with the last minute encounter He's like, yeah, I'm gonna. That blaze kind of hurt. I'm gonna do a quick heal up. <laughs> Ooh, we got a poisoned imp that got slowed. Oof. So, two That's diabolical nice. whistles so far. Yeah, I know. Dine also got the wheel, too. Lion's just busy making his way through, uh... through the grind section here of the river. So, one thing I didn't mention about the river is... So, in the SNES, we get to manipulate it where you only get two encounters. Here, uh, you can get a couple of skippable ones. Uh, it's completely random. But it can save you like 30, 40 seconds by just not having to fight them. That does mean you will be down a little bit in experience and money, but it's not that detrimental if you don't get it. Because usually the fights that you are skipping are weak, slow ones like, uh, like this Exocyte and... Yeah, this we'll go with not a lawyer. Like, just it really just doesn't give that much experience or really gold. So they do yeah. apparently drop eye drops though, which uh, I just learned today. Yeah, Dying could have used them. 
so on the uh, on the waterfall here, Dines is going to be waiting for about four cyan turns. This is going to let the game run through enough until Rizopas shows up. And then, uh, then we basically do the same thing that we normally do. One thing here that's kind of fun is if someone does row, their next attack, or the next thing that they're going to do if you auto battle it through is just going to be a regular attack, so you can actually just auto battle straight through it. Uh, there's a couple of other instances where if an action isn't repeatable, then PR is going to just default to attack. So if you ran out of items, if you ran out of MP, if you last turn was a an Esper, even on the next fight, so say you did an Esper summon on one fight and it killed everything, and then you go to the next fight, it won't do an Esper for some reason, it'll just go straight to attack, so you have to input Esper casts every time, and this is actually relevant for one part of the run. That's hours down the road, but it is relevant. <laughs> Here we get to meet everybody's favorite boy, Gao. Definitely doesn't crush anybody's dreams ever. Yeah, hopefully we get an early Gao. <laughs> Don't want to see anybody grinding for gra a Gao in order to progress the story. So, we were talking about a lower encounter rate. <clears throat> It's actually unlucky to get an encounter before Mob was here, because most of the time you can make it all the way there without getting an encounter. You can usually get through this whole Velt. Like, a good Velt is one encounter after Mob was, after you buy this dried meat, and you find Gao, and that's all you get on this Velt. Actually kind of nutty how uh, that works out. Not a terrible encounter. Let's see, do we get the boy? Okay, good. I didn't want to jinx it. Uh, Dine's been saying lately he's been getting like seven and eight try gals in practice. And I was getting a little bit worried, but I didn't want to uh, I didn't want to jinx the boy. We got the first time now, so... And he's very close to the exit, so you can just jump right in and move on to the next part. Yeah, from move this on point on, you can you can basically say seven scenarios done other than going through that... The little bit of a... Oh, what's it called? Trench. That's what it's called. Yeah, other than going through the trench. trench. Yeah, and then some shopping, and that's about it. See what Muchiha gets. Ooh. Yeah, this fight is not great to get. It is possible to get Gao on this on this spot at least. There was a point there when we thought it wasn't. Sabin just got netted. And no Gao. No Gao. A high push. And this is usually when you're like, man, now maybe I don't really like that low encounter rate, because now I'm looking for stuff. <laughs> so you can auto battle your way through all of this until Gao shows up, and then... Oh, no! Ooh. He used the dried meat on himself! No! Okay, he's just going to do a reset instead of going back and buy another one. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so the reset it would just be the uh, auto save that was done after he left the town. So so one thing you'll see with the PRs here is after you uh, reset here a bit, you'll uh, notice that we have to just kind of sit there for a while. The, the now loading screen does last quite a bit. Uh, you only see it on a screen reload. Like what we did there. Uh, if you get a death, it seems to phase in pretty quick. Alright, hopefully we get a gal on this one. Okay, good. 
Back to our regular scheduled program. Yep, there you go. Dried meat on gal. Good to go. All right, so Lion's just busy making his way through the Imperial camp here. I did not catch if he got the Black Bill, but with a 7 8 chance drop, I'm going to just assume he did. And then if I notice that he doesn't really do much of a menu before, then, then we have to cry. So the trench here, um, <clears throat> with the way that auto battle works, it's still kind of up in contention on if it's better to fight some of these fights out or just run away. I think most people are going to opt for run away, but... Like, if you get a single angle form, it's probably better to fight. Even, like, the double angle form, it might be better to fight. Once you get to, like, the three, four, five packs, it's probably better to run away. But that's uh, hoping you don't get hit by numb spines and uh, you have to just sit there and wait out the stop. Which, fortunately, the auto battle makes the stop not last that long. But you still get to just not do anything. Back attack on dying screen there. Alright. Little run away. Not too bad. So we do a bit of a slight variance from SNES here as well. Instead of taking the right path and the left path, we're actually going to take two right paths. Uh, this is going to get us one less encounter, but allows us to get the green beret. Uh, we're going to be using that green beret until, like, World of Ruin. Uh, just raising our, uh, our max HP. Which is always nice. Mm -hmm. With all the characters being relatively low level, you really want, like, as much HP and defense on them as you can. As you can get. Well, that was actually a really fast runaway. Cyan will get there. There he goes. Looks like Lion did get the black belt. Wait to see. I want to see someone. You can get that ATB bug and like, like I said, you can get like four or five hits off of it sometimes. Oh, kind of like what Lion's getting there. Beautiful. Oh, nice. I think some of the bosses, like there's some specific bosses that can also get that bug, which is a whole lot less fun. But uh, it's nice when we can, this is pretty much the only instance where we really get to use it, unfortunately. So Dine's gonna do a little bit of shopping here. The big thing is we're gonna be grabbing uh, a Megas hat. Yeah, we've changed it back down to one now. Gonna sell a few things. We don't really need that black belt anymore. It's done its purpose. A few other things here. And uh, get his... crossbow. And buying 40 smoke bombs. Yeah, Edgar isn't really gonna be used until after we make our way to Zozo, which means we can go and buy his good tools. Now we're going to go to the terror scenario. Like I said, we're going to... You're guaranteed to get all three encounters here, unfortunately. But we do get a little bit more consistency on the runaways with the smoke bombs. There is a bug, and it seems to happen more so just on that first fight. Otherwise, you don't really see it where uh, a person will use a smoke bomb. And the person that used it will be the only one that runs away. And then you have to use another smoke bomb for everybody to run away. It's always funny to see because they're like, you know what? I'm out of here. And the rest of the team's like, what about us? But from this point on, we're going to be smoke bombing everything we need to run away. So at least that makes life a little bit easier. And that's why we do seven scenario first. So 
So basically we're just running from point A to point B. Uh, kind of hoping that you can get through this whole walk with like one or two encounters if you get really good RNG, but you're usually not banking on it. And you'll see on like preamps and and side attacks, we're still going to use smoke bombs just because with the speed and everything, the running away is a little inconsistent. And it just seems to be faster just to let that smoke bomb rip. Uh, the As we said, the NPC stuff does move pretty slow compared to SNES version, so that makes the, hitting that trap actually a whole lot easier. Yeah, that was a very slow circle as it rotates around you. Eagles. Sure hope we get to see all of those guys again. Lines making his way through the Imperial camp here, pretty much in the part where you just get to auto battle everything through. Hopefully, hopefully no one takes too many dirt naps. Luckily, if they do, we do get a healing spring coming up soon. But uh, the beginning of the forest can be a little bit scary uh, if you have like a low health sabin or something. Yeah, you're really just hoping to get to the free heal before anything super bad happens and you're able to get through really that first screen. And now, good old lock scenario. Yeah, on dying screen, right before he uh, finished up terror scenarios, so he dropped into the menu and just cleared uh, deed. Uh, Edgar of all of his equipment and things. So, yeah, it's the gauntlet, the gauntlet that we mostly want. Inventory. Yeah, so that moves that into the inventory so you can throw that on Celis for the uh, tunnel armor fight at the end here. Um, there I think the go. game just had Lock do row on Dine screen, he was, even though he pretty his... clearly had the steel on. So his last action would have been on Vargas when he did the row and then he would have just let it rock through before he died. So the game still remembers your memory cursor from all the way back then. So like, okay, the last thing you did was you were on defend row, so it put him back into that section. So when he pushed down thinking he was just going to go to steal, he actually ended up going to row. Uh, the memory in this goes almost a little too far sometimes. We actually do get to abuse it in things where you're swapping your party members, but... It does go really far back. There's even a thing with the... Whatever Sabin's last action was before Ultros, the game remembers for when you first go into Imperial Camp. It's something like that. Why it's not what your first act or what your last action is in Ultros and why it's the action leaving, leaving the last fight before it, I'm not really sure. But uh, that's the way she goes. weird quirks in this game. It keeps you on your toes. Yeah. Like I said, for things like uh, when we're going through like Kefka's Tower and you have most people on smoke bombs and then you swap back to the party, you can just basically auto battle through every single fight now because you know everyone's just going to be on smoke bomb. So in situations like that, it's really nice. It right, looks like Lion's cruising through the train, not too terrible so far. So like the little counterattack that he got there was actually kind of bad because it allowed the enemies to get ATB as well. Like I just I just want to leave. We don't actually care about the experience here, bro. I need the experience, don't need the gold. Just let me out, let me out. I love the merchant's pose when he steals clothes.
happening. His name is Naked. I think in the SNES oh. they call it birthday suit. Yeah, it's B day suit or B yeah, yeah B day suit. Picking up cells. Game damage dealer, the end game. Alright, so one thing we picked up the rune edge in the terror scenario. Uh, the rune edge uses MP to guarantee a crit. And so we put a gauntlet on Celeste with this rune edge. So she's going to be dishing out a lot of damage on the next boss fight. We're not really, like I said, we're not going to be doing really any grinding until... There's like one fight we take leaving Zozo, and other than that, it's like not till Sealed Cave we actually worry about taking it. Grab the earring because that's going to raise our... Magical attacks by 25%, and you can also pair it with another one... To, uh, to bump it up to 50. And luckily, magic is really strong in this game. So, guess what we're going to be using a lot of later on in the run? If you guessed magic, you guessed right. So, one thing about the, the cave here is this is one of the areas, also the Narsh cave, where the chests actually level up throughout the game as you uh, as you come through here. This is the first level up. The second one would technically be in World of Ruin, but we don't really care about the World of Ruin stuff. So this chest we're going to come over here is originally like an ether or something like that, but it turns into a thunder rod, which usually in other routes we use this thunder rod to kill tunnel armor right away. We're actually going to be saving this for Crane because we have this uh, Rune Edge set up to take on Tunnel Armor here, and it makes Cranes a whole lot less scary. So what we're going to be end up doing here is, as long as we get Celeste and Locke to attack twice, uh, that's basically a GG. So you're going to see Celeste do a ton of damage. Locke going down. I, this is typically okay. Perfectly, just as you as you write it up. Yep, there we go. All according to plan. Lion, on the other hand, is having a great old time on train. Ooh, so he's berserked, and Cyan is. I think slowly. also berserked. All right. So, uh, Cyan three diabolical whistles. Yes. <laughs> give that fight another shot. Uh, Mujiha did rename Celis, by the way, so she, she is now called Mogtam. Nice. Representing Team Mog. Oh, of course, always, so it seems to be a thing with this where, uh... Suplex! If the game gives you a really rude fight the first time, the second time it's super tame. And then it's like, why did you why did you do this to me, game? Why couldn't <laughs> you do this the first time? Yeah, pal game. The easy fight first time. Alright. At the very least we were able to see one suplex there. So good job, Lion. Sarath points out in chat, Choco are now the official winners of the uh, FF Relay. As they're the only team that performed the suplex on the Phantom Drain. Alright, so the, the Kafka fight here might have some variance in what uh, some people do. <clears throat> Typically, we bring Locke around just for sprint shoe use. That's basically all he's really going to do. 
There's a fun little quirk in this game where some things that shouldn't be able to crit do. Uh, one of those things is Gao using the Silver Lobos and he uses Chomp. You can sometimes get a crit Chomp. You can get crit Dispatches and Pummels and things like that. And I'm not entirely sure why, but we're not going to complain about it either. Wujiha gets a really calm fight, at least. That's how we write it up. There you go, yeah. Just a couple of physical attacks from uh, Tunnel Armor. Able to get through that really quickly. So we used to so use... This, uh... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, this section here with Dine, where Dine's at, this is... Really see kind of the beauty of, of the um, sprint shoes with the extra speed in this game to just really short circuit all of this. Wait, you know, where you don't even have to wait for the green guys to get through at all. And NPC detection is pretty terrible when you're going that fast, so you can just rip right on through. So we used to use Celeste and have her runic everything here. But now that she's going to be doing, hopefully, a lot of damage, uh, Kefka's evasion is actually pretty decent. So, Gao and Celeste can miss. Luckily, they're not. This is actually going, like, the way it's supposed to go. When does this happen? There you go. That's Kefka. That was a really quick fight. into a cutscene for Dine, and we see Terra freak out. Line is getting kind of to the... kind of the part where you start or stop worrying so much about Sabin's scenario, luckily. Mostly after the whole train section, then, uh, then I kind of feel better about it. Looks like Muchiha isn't bringing Gao to the Kefka at North Shore. Uh, I missed it. He opt for Cyan. Yeah, I believe it's like Cyan in there. Lock in there? I don't even think Lock is in there. All right, Muga Lion's walk to to Mobles was nice and nice and calm at least. Hopefully, hopefully he gets a nice. So if you get like a single leafer early on in the game, you can end up getting that here, and it's probably like the best thing to. Yeah, no, we're just going to get another martial fight. Sure. With a net. Awesome. I think that's the second time we've seen that. Yeah. Some bad luck there. I think Muchio got that on his first pass through. Muchio threw the Kefka and Narsh fight. That was really quick with all four characters attacking there. Using the uh, auto crossbow with Ed and uh, Fang with Cyan. So Dime's gonna be rocking over here just to grab a bunch of nice goodies in this area. 
and he left one there. Tisk tisk. Now I know it's supposed to be locked, but uh, we have lock here, and later on in the world of ruin, if you bring lock to Narsh, you uh, he comes around and he unlocks everything. So he must have learned that in the the next year or something, because he can't do it here apparently. And we get a gal with lion here. Big yay. So no one got gal trolled. Super hard. There was, there was a little bit of a sketchiness in some spots, but for the most part, no one got trolled. Dine doing some shopping, picking up the flash and the drill. Sell Hyper Wrist, buy some high potions, some Phoenix Downs, and getting 25 Holy Waters. Holy Waters used for the grind coming up in the sealed cave. And now we get to see what's beyond the mountains because. Somehow this works. I try not to think about it too much, because it breaks my brain, but this castle can move entirely. Until it gets now, stopped. Now, it is a little bit slower, technically, to bring the twins and you get those little blurbs, but also the twin brothers here are just so good at this point in the game that there's no reason not to bring them. Tools and Blitzes is like the most damage output you could ask for. Especially for pretty much no work. Like we bought a couple tools and Sabin came with well, Aura Bolt. It, Aura Bolt is what makes Sabin good. <laughs> Yeah, the Raging Fist is helpful, but I think from here on out, we shouldn't really expect to see it very much. Especially once you have the uh, earrings, throw that on, get the increased magic damage from uh, the Aura Bolt. Yeah, there's only like a couple spots we might use Raging Fist in Magitech Factory, and that's usually a backup. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we don't have to get to that point, but if we do, uh, it'll be a good time. Uh, there is no chainsaw pickup. It is too inconsistent, and it doesn't save any time since it doesn't save us any turns. Honestly, the chainsaw is not that good of a weapon. The very first time I played this game, I got the chainsaw, and I was using it all the time, and I just got so frustrated with that thing because it just it just doesn't work. It just annoyed me. It kept on missing constantly. I'm really frustrated. I end up having to take it all. Stop using it, I guess. So, walking through Zozo here can be a little bit scary. Because the enemies are so much faster that uh, the Veil Dancers, if you get a solo one, can use a tier 2 spell. Either a solo target or on everybody. If they do it on everybody, you're kind of hoping for a couple of low rolls. Or Sabin will be the only one who can survive at a full HP. So, hopefully we can just run away from them all really fast. You're really hoping for good ATB, like, on Locke, like Dine got there. Locke also has the Hermes shoes on, so be able to just kind of run away from that or drop a smoke bomb real quick, get out of there before the dancer can actually do anything damaging. Oh, one thing I did mention, you'll see Mujiha coming over here. The, we only make this detour for two reasons. We, well, the main reason is we come over here for a hero ring, which is basically like the earring and the 
Atlas Armlet basically fuse together to uh, make a, an awesome thing of 25% increase on magic and on regular attack. Uh, the other reason is we can actually get a Chocobo right beside here, otherwise it would be a very long detour with a lot of encounters for... Honestly, still a good item, but we would probably just come and pick it up later then. But this Chocobo just, you know, doesn't let us get any any encounters along the way. Dataluma's a pretty consistent fight. Assuming you put Sabin in the right part of the turn order, which Dine did not, and he got burnt for it. <laughs> so, assuming you put Cyan in the right part of the turn order, uh, he isn't the one to do the killing blow on Dataluma, and Edgar will drill Dataluma or Celeste will fight him. But if Sabin's the last one, he can still Aura Bolt Dataluma, but he can also, as you can see, hit one of the buddies instead. Now, well, hopefully, Dine remembers to go grab that chest on the left side after this cutscene. I believe we have someone joining us. Sorry, uh, hello. Sorry for being late. I'm Pharaoh. I got invited because I threw flowers at Metaku and but people thought that was funny. So, we just finished that Aluma for Team Thornberry, and I think Team Moth is on the way to the fight as well? They are making their way up right now, yeah. Yeah, Moochie had just dropped, or just lost lock to the dancer back at that. That was pretty rough. Slam dancer doing slam dancer things. Yep. Lying us through Sabin's scenario and just thinking, now I can actually use these smoke bombs, thank goodness, because running away is not that fun. This is usually the part where you can be like, okay, the run gets a little bit better here for a while. So th that running away can, it can get really rough if we, as we've seen. Oh, yet another ambush. Yeah, another back attack. Muchi, I'll run into a couple so far already. Dine had a little bit easier time getting through Zozo. I guess the one thing that I didn't mention is uh, on Edgar, we're putting on a hero ring and an earring here to give him that 50% uh, increase on his magical ability since Flash is magical, and then uh, another 25% on his physical, which is what Drill is, so that's why. As, like I said, you can see the twins are putting out massive amounts of damage for how low level we really are. Nice. That's what happens when you put Sabin in the right part of the turn order. <laughs> Novels. Dine is at the end of the cutscene where we discovered that Terra is part Esper and uh, Muchiha just started it. We are going to be picking up all of these Espers. Uh, they're all going to have some sort of, Usually Kieran doesn't have a use, but uh, once we get to Ifri and Shiva, I'll talk a little bit, talk a little bit more about it, but it's it's not because we actually, well, we kind of want the regen, but it, we also don't really care about the regen. It's more, it's a weird situation. Wine's just doing his point A to point B through Terra scenario. Gonna say hi to Mog and all the Moogles. Pick up the Rune Sword, Rune Blade. I missed when it was the Rune Edge. Uh, 
Uh, so we are going to be taking one encounter on the way to the opera house here. Uh, this is going to make it so that we only need to take three rats instead of four in the opera because honestly the rats are kind of annoying to fight. We don't get to manipulate if we get a three pack or a five pack. So you could in theory just get three or four five packs which is not ideal because they attack a lot and we are only going to have three people which means someone's getting two tapped at least once. Oh, it doesn't really matter if we get a three or a four pack here. Uh, Edgar should be able to... mostly be able to kill everything. Just do a real quick sure. check. Yeah. Find out how to uh, do the blitzes. <laughs> <laughs> the, cr the crit fire knuckle on the bug just for stupid amounts of damage for no reason. <laughs> it did, it did 1100 yeah. damage. That is ridiculous. Saving so just flexing on these no 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 mobs. Uh, the white dress here is uh, for the for the girl characters. It does raise the magic power up a little bit. Like most of our whole mo from this point on is going to be how can we raise that magic power up. And then we kind of go with just a, a glass cannon build for for a lot of this. Which, uh, like I said, with things going a whole lot faster, makes things really interesting. And I say interesting because I am the commentator, not the runner. <laughs> <laughs> interesting for us. Yeah. Exactly. Lion was able to steal the uh, main galish off of the merchant. Okay, um, it does add a little, a little more it, it, speed. Yeah, yeah, it gives you one extra speed over the thief knife. I don't know if he'll opt to use it or not. It also sells for one GP. Yeah, so, so from that respect, it's, it's not very helpful at all. There might be a chance that he uses it, or he holds on to it till maybe World of Ruin, because there's a spot where we actually want to may want to sell something for 1 GP just to make a boss not nuke us on turn 1. Or he might just sell it to clear things up in Thamasa. We'll, we'll see what he ends up doing with that. He has a, a while to think about it. Coming up on the, uh, the opera here, which, uh, since this is the first time the Pixel Remaster has been played in this event, I believe... Okay, we're on Muchiha for, for the sound right now. Uh, once we get through that, but we'll uh, we'll let it play through because they put the entire budget into this opera, and you will not change my mind. They knocked this opera out of the park. It's very, very good. Especially in Italian. <laughs> The Japanese version is also very good, so we'll be able to hear that one. Are you going to get to hear B-Dude sing? That's what everybody nope. wants to know. I believe someone <laughs> in chat redeemed that. Though. Yeah, I didn't I, I didn't see any redeems at all. Points? Yeah. Oh yeah, isn't it weird that... Uh, dang, no, there's no channel points to use either. Oh, that's unfortunate. But uh, I guess one thing we didn't really say on a uh, Dines thing here is uh, you sort of recruit Setzer here where Muchiha is. Get to at least name him a little bit. Uh, he's important because he lets us get to places and that's about it. He he is our uh, MacGuffin, if you will, if you will. He also has a um, potential use on the final fight. If everything goes well, it's we're not gonna use him, but it's still a backup. I have seen so much endgame practice from these guys over the past 24 hours, it's insane. 
getting ready. Because late game, and the, especially on Pixel Remaster, I mean, SNES is also, but... Late game for this game in particular is brutal. I guess Chad is demanding you to sing B, dude. I don't see a redeem, so I'm gonna I'm gonna let it rock. Damn. But yeah, once Muji Ha gets onto here because we have the sound on I'm gonna let you guys just enjoy it to the fullest because it is amazing. Yeah. Fernal Lion is just finishing up Lock Scenario, he already saved Celis. And on his way to the tunnel armor fight. Very, very soon. Make sure they don't have access to flowers. You just have to trust that we both have flowers in our hands right now. Yeah, we're gonna toss them in the air. Yep. You might not believe me, but my taco's just over there and I'm gonna chuck it to him. Yep, he's over here, too. Some tacos twin. Lion is past an alarmer and the opera is about to begin, so... So that's going to be the first part. The second part, it is, as you've seen, we have like cutscene changes. The singing is amazing. We also get to hear the Japanese version, which I don't get to hear very often. But uh, this is one that they really take it home.
I think that's the first time I've listened to the Japanese version. I know there was a bit there when Dine was doing runs and he'd be like, let's try all of the languages. <laughs> what did he end up we running at it... ESA? Was it Italian? Italian, yeah. We had a small debate over which one we should choose. We ended up going for Italian. I just skipped the googly eyes. He is really concentrating on trying to actually win this, isn't he? Yeah, what a mm -hmm. tryhard. I know, man. <laughs> I think this was like the last run of the entire relay or something, man. Come on. Uh, he did get to skip that first rat, which uh, takes a lot less stress on you. Because we only want three of them. Okay, this isn't horrible. It's a five pack, but... It's a five pack where you, I think they can still summon buddies in a side attack. I actually don't know that if they can or not. I assume so through scripting, but it would just look weird where buddies come and like join in the middle of the ambush. What did Locke learn there? Was that sleep? Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. Alright, so Tom and Barry about to start to uh, get another Ultros fight. The whole point of this fight is you want Savin to attack Ultros in the back, and he always spins to whoever attacks him. Since he has the Fire Knuckle, it does twice as much damage, and since you can also get a back attack, it'll be twice as much damage. So that 4x damage does a lot of work in this fight. It's the only thing. I'm sorry, go, go, go. I was gonna say, the only thing you're kind of worried about is a. Uh, Savin taking a, a tentacle by himself. Because I don't know if he actually did a party swap or not. He did not. Okay. Yeah, you can see that does tremendous... Oh, and he also has the... Ooh, we got lucky with the a regular attack. And he rocks a... A gauntlet Edgar looks as well, so tons of damage happening all over the place. Ooh, yeah. Very quick that was some juicy damage. That was a very fast fight. There it goes. Ultros, bye bye. So each time we fight Ultros, he gives us one extra GP from the last fight. So the first one he gives us one, then two, and it's going to be all the way up to four, Mr. Moneybags. Looks like Mog also managed to get away from the first strat. I don't know if that was, oh, I'm trying to see here, if that was Edgar or, that is Edgar hitting 13 for Muchiha, so that's going to be very useful in the Magitech factory. Mostly in the minecart section, it uh, makes that go a whole lot faster because it turns into a single, a single attack fight for pretty much the whole thing. So, Lion is going to restart his stream because his feed was very delayed to where he actually is on the on the run. But he should be back very, very soon. So yeah, Muchiha opts to have Sabin on the same side as Edgar in the event of a tentacle, I'm guessing. 
and uh, doesn't want to use the gauntlet in this one. Also just a single attack. And that's the fight. Very smooth for both Tonberry and Mog. So I believe on Lion's stream we've basically missed the Ataluma fight. fight. Yeah, I guess most of the run through Zozo as well. So, yeah, it was pretty far behind, but now I think we're all caught up. So we should be good to go for the rest of the rest of the run. I love this fly up to Vector. By the way, they they nailed this one out of the park too. Looks super ominous. Yeah, it's really good. This in the uh, minecart as well. Sure. I mean, the minecart looks way better in this version than it does in the SNES. Yeah, the minecart looks sick. That's where my boomer's showing because I like this SNES minecart. <laughs> Hurts my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Too old. So coming up to the first boss fight here is going to be Ifrit Shiva. Uh, because we took the one encounter before the opera and then we took the three rats, we don't need to worry about taking anything in here to learn spells that we need. Uh, Dine is opting to actually go for the Flame Tongues. I guess this is, he's going to go with the Marathon Safety Strats. I know he hates taking this Crane Hook because it moves quite slow. I think it's like almost a 15 second save by just not grabbing that Flame Tongue, but he's probably thinking Locke is going to fail him and not steal the, the Rune Edge on 24 as well. Which I don't blame him. Lock is the greatest disappointment that we carry around with us everywhere. Well, Doesn't Lock has an explosion. important job. Lock has a very important job of throwing smoke bombs as fast as humanly possible. <laughs> so this Ifrit and Shiva fight, we can't run away from it like we can in SNES. So we fight it up outright, and we want to kill Ifrit before Shiva even comes out. He gets a lot of attacks off because of the very fast uh, battle speed. but And he also gets counter attacks off a lot. But it seems to happen that if you have Kirin going on with the regen that happens every time, it almost interrupts the counter attack uh, more than it doesn't. So it kind of helps us circumvent that a little bit. And if a counter does come through, the regen actually does pop off enough that it means we get to heal a little bit less as well. That being said, Ifrit has a couple of really nasty things that he can still do. This is actually one of the first fights where you can just die and lose a bunch of time because the game wants you to. So we're going to be basically trying to boost as much magic power as we can on Celeste. We're going to try and get Edgar to... Get as much uh, physical power as we can because we're going to be doing Drill and Blizzard. And hopefully we kill him in six attacks. <clears throat> Otherwise, uh, Shiva's going to pop through. Now you'll notice that he didn't do a quick save. We actually get an auto save as we come down. What was he not going to use Kieran? I was pumping up Kieran so much. All right, what do I know? Yeah, it looks like he's just going for it. Better go fast. Well, that's what we used to do. <laughs> it's 
So yeah, I know it's just basically letting the auto battler run. I'm basically yeah, hoping that uh, Edgar and Celeste don't eat dirt at all, because then you have to get them back up. I think this is the fight that shows just how wonky the PRs are with uh, turn order and who's going when more than any other. Like, this is this is really where I notice it, you know? Yeah, it's you'll like see... everyone has full ATB and the game just pauses for like three solid seconds. And you're like, what? Some, somebody, anybody do something, please. Just move on. Yeah, there's a bit of uh, ATB clogging that happens with uh, very fast battle speed, auto battle happening, and everyone being queued up. The game almost seems to like not be sure who's supposed to go, so it'll just sit there for a little bit and be like, uh, okay, I guess you can go. And that's when you can uh, get into a little bit of trouble, depending on uh, what the game wants to have happen. It's the beauty of the PR. Yeah, we end up not picking up Ifrit. He uh, doesn't have any use for us. Shiva doesn't have a use for us either, but she's blocking the door. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good reason as any to pick up the Magicide. And honestly, if you've had some of the Ifri fights that a lot of the runners have had, you don't want to pick up Ifri because you just don't want to deal with him anymore. So, kind of like what we do in other fights, we're going to put... Oh, I didn't realize Celeste took a dirt nap right away. Or was she dead before they came in? She's not going to be of use anyways. Hey, okay, looks like Dine is opting for the... Constant sleep and then waking up with drill. Drill does more damage than flash does, but if we do a sleep, we can interrupt a, a barrier change so that uh, Sabin can keep going with with the aura cannons. Uh, if he didn't pick up the flame tongue, he would have to try and steal a rune edge here with lock. It's a little bit riskier, faster strat. Well, Moo's starting to get some of the nasty stuff from Ifrit. Saw a Fyra happen there. That's not. The scary- oh no! Ooh, Sabin took the Dark Nap. Okay, so swapping over to Shiva is not ideal. See what the plan is here. Sometimes just rocking with the- yeah. oh, he's just gonna- He's just gonna wolf himself. Yeah. The yep. There you go. Uh, I think Don actually was able to steal Runeblade. He had, yeah, he uh, did actually yeah. manage to get it. Yeah. I guess Marathon Safe Strats just trying to get as much money as possible to buy things. I have noticed that uh, Uchiha does like to use Sabin in this fight a little bit as well. Okay, so the reason Dine didn't use the, the Kieran strats is because he forgot to equip it. <laughs> and uh, that's it. All right, no problem. This fight makes me so, because of this, this is why this fight makes me so nervous. Luckily, we got through. Like, that party-wide blaze can roll high enough that just most people will die. And then you're like, well, either we spend a long time trying to do damage control, or, or we just try again. Dine's doing a little bit of a setup. So he has a level 12 Edgar right now. Uh, this is going to make... He's going to run through with a single Edgar. This makes me a little worried too. Don't you know going with one character alive? Yeah. It's okay. He can take one hit. Probably. 
Luckily, Edgar does have the Hermes shoes on, so that does help a little bit. Yeah. Okay, we are playing the opera in in English. But I just want to go over the... Uh, so, a level 13 Edgar here changes it where... He can maybe kill everything with a flash to... You're very unlucky if he doesn't kill everything with a flash. And that's where you can... Oh, okay. The, uh, the overflow on Edgar is a little bit scary because he can... He can flash the entire party and kill everybody. So, luckily he went for just a physical instead. <laughs> Ideally on this minecart, we want to see the four mag rotors. Uh, not only are they the easiest to kill, they also give the most amount of money. But uh, they're also a rare encounter, so you're not really hoping for it, or you're not you are hoping for it. You're not you're not expecting to see it. Muchiha able to pick up the rune blade and able to get through the fight even with the barrier change. Looks like we don't get any uh, 4x magna rotors. They're such a good encounter. Should be coming up to the next boss fight. Oh, so, no, there's still a couple more left. Yeah, 128 is a bit of a troll. Uh, depending on what his opener is, we have Vanish on everybody right now. Uh, he can use some ma well, the arms can use magic abilities. Uh, I think we're actually going to see a bit of a variance on how we do these fights between Muchiha and Dine, uh, Muchiha Omega with the, uh, the Shout strat here. Uh, it's a little bit riskier because the body seems to get a few more of the nastier stuff off, especially with a, uh, a haste on. This fight seems to be a little more consistent with the Flash Bismarck Flash. Mostly because with Auto Battle, one of the arms comes back and then you don't get to see that haste and then you don't get to see the... Uh, like an Atomic Ray or a Gale Cut or something. And you don't want to lose that Vanish ability because Red Feast works very differently in this, or I think it's called Blood Feast, where in the SNES, it would do like 60 damage, but now it doesn't care about your defense and it doesn't care about your row, so now it starts to hit you for like 220, 230, 240 damage, and then it heals them for that much as well. So not only does your character die, he gets healed for a lot. And that's where that's where that fight can go bad really quick. Alright, and white while Mog starts the minecart, Tonberry is about to do cranes, which is another very trolley fight, at least on snows. Yeah, this one's a little bit easier because we get to hold on to that thunder rod. The thunder rod from before. Did you just uh, instantly kill one of the cranes? We're... I'm gonna guess Stein's still gonna go for the rare debilitator steal on the right, since then that can save us like 40 seconds and two and a half thousand gil in the world of ruin. It is a rare steal, and I think the chances of it is like... less than 15%. But if you get it, you're really happy. It's not like Locke really has anything else to do in this fight anyways.
But uh, because we have this Thunder Rod and Edgar should be at level 13 now, uh, the right crane is going to go down really fast, and then you'll see the left crane goes down even faster. Ah, we got a high potion. You got something. Got a high potion. Oh. Nine's been going through a lot of those. He needs them. <laughs> and then, uh, so these guys are weak to water as well. Uh, but Bismarck has split damage. But because we killed the right crane first, we do a stupid amount of damage on the left one. And then you just need a little bit of tick damage. And that is the crane's fight. Easy. Yeah, pretty quick. Having the Thunder Rod there helps an awful lot. Just to really one-shot the right crane. Uh, one thing to mention about rods, I guess, different from the SNES is, in the SNES, uh, it always did the highest damage roll. Here, we actually get variant rod damage. So you have to kind of account for that, which makes some f like there's a bunch of fights in the SNES where we were like just barely killing on that highest damage roll and so now that you have that variance you get extra battles attacks you have to use more rods or whatever else so we have to kind of route and circumvent the fact that there's going to be a lot of variance on what used to be a very high oh, what a consistency I guess Insolent role, name of the Western Oh no, not the net. On the plus side, Locke is actually useful in this fight, having a Thunderblade or a Flame Tongue on. Uh, not that it matters because he's going to get netted as well. <laughs> and there's the Blood Feast. You see, it does like 212 damage on Edgar there. Edgar doesn't get to do anything this fight. <laughs> Goodbye, Edgar. Yeah, he should almost be dead. There it is. Okay, good. That, like I said, that fight can go... It can go from this is fine to this is not fine within seconds. And you saw Muchia's version. He didn't use Bismarck to uh, get the water damage on. Did he end up going short? No, he didn't do that. He just oh, he just didn't do aura bolt and just oh. one hand. So a lot of this routing, in. a lot of this routing has changed for everyone's little bit of preferences and what they kind of want to think might be better and whatever. Ooh, I don't think Lion has the proper gear on Ed. So that was all very low rolls. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 170 on one of the golden rats. I don't think that's correct. Either that or else he's under leveled. Because these rats have, uh, well, the, the gray ones have 299 HP, so you want to be hitting like 300s or so. Level 12. Yeah, he's still got a gauntlet. There we go. Slap an earring on there and you should be good to go. Oh no. Oh, okay, so he probably just did that menu a little bit early is my guess. He must have taken an extra encounter along the way too because he opted for only two rats, which is ideal, but you usually don't expect to only get two rats. Do you see what that I, steel was, Pat? I couldn't read high that. High potion. Okay. Mog also on cranes now. Didn't get Luck the debilitator. Luck got something. No. Alright, good fight by Muchiha there. Got the seven flush to finish it off. And Setzer has now done his use for a very long time. We'll see him again in, like, an hour and a half. Maybe next year we can see him in no sketch.
where he mm. shines. <laughs> I think I'm sick next year. It's gotta be in these things, one of these things one day, man. Our line gets through a pretty easy Ultras fight as well. Hopefully his M Tech Factory goes pretty well. Dines went pretty good. Muchiha's was a little rough early on. Uh, Magic Factory is one of those spots where, where it either just goes really well, or it seems like it just snowballs and just this boss fight went bad and that boss fight went bad. Yeah, definitely, especially with the Ifrit fight there, and you know, just it seems like the damage rolls are really close to determining whether or not you're going to bring in Shiva or Shiva's going to come in or not. So she comes in, that definitely causes a lot of problems for that fight. So we're coming up to one of the dedicated grinds here. Luckily, we we get to do it on a while running from point A to point B. But we're going to be getting Terra to at least level 19. Uh, underneath the Esper Maduin, because then we get plus one magic power per level up. Also, I guess it works a little bit on her tier two spells, which kind of matters. And then basically just trying to make him go as fast as possible. Uh, we bring Locke because he's fast and also we're just going to need a, a second person for for when we get into the sealed cave. But this is where all those holy waters are going to be used. Before that, we got to go talk to Bannon. Where Bannon once again shows that even though he's the leader of the resistance, he really has no idea how to actually fight against the Empire. And just put all of his eggs in the hey Terra, why don't you help us basket? Muchiha's going through the kind of the, the boring Esper section, mostly because even casually it doesn't really do much. You kind of walk around, you talk to the people to get some narrative, but I just wish they kind of gave you a little bit more with, you know, at certain points throughout the little scenario, the Espers give more than just basically saying the same thing amongst every single one. The Espers were a little more kind to... I forgot her name. None of this would have happened. That's the sad part. They changed her name to... Name to... Yeah, it's like Madeline now, I think. Yeah, because it was Madonna. It used to be a Yeah. Yeah. So one thing that threw every person off when we uh, first came into the sealed cave here is you can't cheat the bridges. And basically hold the direction across the transitional section and I think Dines broke because he's like I don't actually know how to get across this properly when we did our day one race and it was amazing to see so I bought this for the switch uh, about a month ago and I was playing it casually and uh, yeah that was the exact problem that I ran into I literally had no idea how to get across the bridge and uh, it took me probably like 15 minutes just to get across the bridge it was kind of ridiculous so, kind of like what we did early on in the game, uh, we're going to have Locke run away and then Terra can get all this experience because we don't really care about Locke getting levels. He also had a very rough fight there where he had to throw an X potion thanks to the back attack. So one fun little thing here is you can actually queue a Holy Water on the same enemy and the game will retarget to a different one, but if you auto-battled the Holy Waters, you'd be using it on yourself, so you have to manually 
I say target it every single time, but it... As long as you're hitting the A button, it's like, oh yeah, you want to use these on enemies. But if you auto-battle it, it doesn't want to use it on enemies. Speaking of back attacks, Lion's dealing with one as well. Smoke bomb to the rescue. I believe he went and grabbed the flame tongue as well. It's just a safer thing than trying to hope that lock gets the steel off for sure. The extra explosion too. It's a big dying skip. He did, and then he had to use one in this area. Luckily we do pick up a lot of explosions and elixirs. Well, I say we, but we all know how Dine feels about safety stuff, so... <laughs> Maybe I use the term we a little loosely. Mm -hmm. Well, he does grab this one, so that's good. Right. We are going to be grabbing the Atma, or the Ultima weapon here. It's not going to really have much use, except for... Like one boss fight in the tiers, but it is going to be like the big pivotal thing that we need in that fight. Yeah. Oh, another back attack. How about that? I think the game is uh, trying to make sure that the other teams can catch up. Six PR is all about team close race. <laughs> Holy Water is always done damage to the undead. Uh, it's a slightly faster animation, but it's also cheaper. But if you ran out of Holy Waters, because that can sometimes happen, you can revert to using your Phoenix Downs. You just usually don't, because Phoenix Downs are a lot more useful for when people die. Yeah, they're pretty expensive. Don't want to be wasting money. Just chucking Phoenix downs on these things. Okay, so he does get Terry to level 20 there. Probably just because he just got an extra encounter rate at the end. He's like, yeah. More levels is better than less levels. Okay, so you see Lion here? He's going to be using Kieran because he remembered to equip it. And now this means that... Uh, in theory, it... It seems like you get less counters off because that little tick happens, and then all of a sudden it's like, if we, I don't know, he cools down during that little bit of time, he's like, you know what, I don't want to. There's a party-wide blaze though, what do I know? Oh no. Oh no. Ed was still alive, so he's bringing up Celis. Looks like he picked the right person to heal. Yeah, I know. You're kind of in a between a rock and a hard place here with just trying to figure out do I go for the offense or or do I play defensively here? And I think he's going more for the offense. Wow, another blaze. At least it wasn't party wide. Yeah. I think he should be okay if he just lets this buck. There we go. There you go. Nice. Nobody likes that fight. Is not a fun fight. So if he just decide, he can use that uh, party wide blaze. So one thing in the PR is, it seems like the boss scriptings, or just the enemy scriptings in general, have changed a little bit. So instead of you seeing like some of the really nasty stuff on like turn three, turn four, turn five, you can start to see that by like turn two. Maybe even turn one, depending on what boss fight it is. And that also makes fights a lot more scary, because now it doesn't even matter if you kill him really fast. You can still see the, the nasty stuff almost immediately. And you have to just kind of... kind of account for that and hope for the best. I think that's something that's been kind of constant throughout all the PLRs, although I haven't played all of them. It's just the fact that like the, the scripts, especially for the bosses, changed up. So it's kind of become anything can happen at any time, really. Yeah, 4 and 5 kind of just get that from just having random ATB versus the static starting ATB. Yeah. 
I know the uh, for FF1 it was really surprising when you came into the first Lich fight and all of a sudden you dropped a Lit 2 to begin with and it was just like, uh, where's, huh? where's, where's the ice to? Ooh, Lion getting the Rune Blade steal as well. That It's such good money to get and this is a pretty... Oh no. Okay, so Savin... Luckily got hit in time. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit scared, but I also was kind of hoping he was going to uh, self-plex himself. <laughs> that would be cool. It's amazing to see him go up in the air, come down with absolutely no one, just smashes his own head on the ground, and just takes a bunch of damage, and you're like, uh, okay, I think I know what happened. <laughs> At least that was funny. So on Team Thornberry's side, they just opened the portal to the Esper world. A bunch of Espers came out, they're angry, and they started burning um, the Blackjack, which is now gonna crash on the near a small little village called Thamasa we are going to spend the next 20 minutes in. And Muchiha is just about to do the same thing. Yeah, in the actually one small thing in this in the SNES version here, you're allowed to smoke bomb away. Here you're actually forced to do a regular attack on Kafka. Doesn't really change anything much, just a slight little difference. Can you steal anything on that? Uh, I wonder if I he has something I've, you can steal. I don't know either. I've never seen the uh the thief knife attack on Kefka there. So Tomberry is going to be working their way to to Vector here again, but this time we're going to be friends instead of trying to infiltrate and take the whole thing down. We're gonna we're gonna become friends with the people that we've been fighting this entire time, probably. Notice after dying got on the chocobo, he switched the perspective to give more of a the top-down perspective. And when I was playing this the first time, I just could not figure out how to move the chocobo around until I finally changed the perspective. It just it's like, where am I going? I have no idea where I'm going. They also make that hitbox on the chocobo much larger, so even when you're not actually close to a mountain, you, uh, you're still going to be bonking off the mountain in tight spots, like on your way to here between the two mountains, gets a little frustrating to get through. So most people opt for, for the little swap. So back in the day when this game first came out, we were forced to do 24 soldier talks and asking all the questions in... In this big in this banquet here, sorry. To make sure that we we get the ward bangle. Uh, recent development, it might have happened in a patch of some sort, just like a little bit of a shadow patch or something. We're not really sure, but I think now they can get away with talking to twenty two. And since we can actually aim, or we can finish off the. Oh, he's going for the the killing law. Ah, I see. This is a this is a bit of a new thing as well. Forcing a little extra experience to to Terra here. But we can actually end this talking to everything a little bit faster since the timer does stop. Uh, it stops during screen transitions, which means in and out of battle, and it also doesn't go off in menus. Uh, one other thing you can do is you can just run away and you still get the credit for the fight, whereas in other versions you had to do the actual fight. But here, yeah, you can just run away and the game's like, yeah, no, good enough. So these guys are like, hey, you should fight me. We run, they're like, you know what, you're pretty good. 
And like we talked about before, it's just so much easier to run away with one character. So that's why he, uh, he off locked there. Lion making his way through the, the minecart here. Not 100% sure if he has a 13 Edgar or not, but if so, he will have a much easier time getting through these early fights. I know he's a big fan of using the Flash Bismarck Flash strat as well. Kind of the old SNES strat, but it is it seems like it works really well and makes the 128 fight a little more consistent. That's unfortunate. So he got hit with a turn two Fyra because Sabin missed. So he's gonna have to recast Phantom here. And Sabin being low on HP means he probably can die to a Blizzard on 128. And yes, Dine is talking to, to 22 guards here. Oh no. Leave Sabin alone! You're going hardcore on him. Actually, a lot of his party is beat up pretty good. He's looking fine, I guess. So yeah, Dian's just going to be going through this little area. Uh, asking all the proper questions. And that's just to give us enough points that he should, should get the ward bangle. I'm still a little bit skeptical on if the 22 and all the questions works, but they say it works, so... I'll believe them. If he doesn't get it, will he do a reload? Uh... Unless he did a quick save... Before he came into here, a reload wouldn't help at all because he's asked all the questions it looks like that Being said because the encounter rate is like half of what you get in the SNES It's not that big a deal and it's not like there's a step route that we're worried about But it'd still be nice to have Like it's, it's worth the the effort Lion got through that fight actually Taking no damage. Or no meaningful damage, Very. at least. Very nice. Morg is going through the timer now, while Don Barry, we're gonna see if we get the lower angle. Okay, good. Nice. May have been Keep holding going. my breath for that. <laughs> and Choco is about to be brains. And yeah, if you do, if you do a blitz. Uh, and then you auto battle through. It just remembers that that's the blitz that you did, and so you can just rock right through it. So if you're really bad at doing the bum rush one, just do it once, and then you don't have to do it ever again in that fight. Or even ever again if you just don't make that character do anything ever again. Let's see, does... Does Lion get the steal? No. Nope. He actually has the worst lock because he didn't even get the high potion. Yeah, no, come on, man. He's like me. He's the only one who doesn't opt to use a Setzer slot and just go straight for the drill. So you'll see Dying just went to the Imperial base there just to get a lot of items. So much money is inside that little area that it's it's too good not to go to. There's money, there's a whole bunch of sabers, there's a back guard in there, which 
we end up selling at least one of them. It's it's too good to pass up for how much money we're gonna need. So we're gonna need like I think it's like 120 or 130 thousand gil for our next shop. Is that the final shop? The end of game shop? No, this is the one that we're coming up to in Thamasa One. Ooh, the, the next yeah, shop requires more rods. money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gotta get all the rods. So from this point on, Don gets to sit back and just relax a little bit. We're kind of hitting the the cutscene central Thamasa section. This is why No Sketch is my favorite version, or my favorite category for this game. Because you just skip all of the Tomasa sequence. Yeah, you'd be back in Narsh by now. I'd probably be dying oh. to IAF at, at the moment, I think. <laughs> That's what I mean. We'll be back in uh, Narsh here real quick. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> So just kind of seeing line deal with it. So one thing that the PR does that it's is kind of funny is it always defaults to the option that you don't want. So like when you come up to a chocobo stable, and it's like, do you want to ride a chocobo? It'll default to no, even if it's the bottom option. Here, when they're like, do you want to, uh, you know, take Madeline's body back and like try and nurse her back to help? It'll default to no, just leave her. It's like, why are we always defaulting on? <laughs> <laughs> the one that we don't want to do, and it's usually the bottom option. Yeah, when FF1 PR came out, it, it was the uh, same thing with the inns. They did finally update it, but it took a while. And yeah, it was just really annoying, because it's like, yes, I'm in an inn because I want to stop and heal. Why are you defaulting to no? So I think the rod count, the big thing that we're going to be getting in Thamasa is rods. I think the rod count for Dine and Line will be about the same. Muchihas might be a little bit different. Um, basically, for the end game, we used to level up Celeste to 47, and then you could rely on her magic a little bit more. Uh, now we only get her to 42. And it makes it makes the end game a little more rod reliant. It also means that you can die a little bit easier, but but it is faster overall. It just makes the end game a uh, a little scary. But I mean, re regardless of if you're 42 or 47, there still is a bunch of just don't get unlucky to just get lucky. Okay, so Muchiha is coming in to get the... the sniper eye here. I know he does the... the IAF a little bit differently. And I think he does his grind a little bit differently as well, so that... that sniper eye is actually going to be required, because I don't think he takes Edgar to floating content, he still takes Strago, which means Edgar doesn't learn Doom, which means Celeste does everything in the grind in World of Ruin, which means we actually need the sniper eye in case we get Cactuar. It's a... it's one of those, like, it's such a small thing that builds up to such a big thing. But then at least you get to see, I'm, I'm kind of happy with the way, I know all these guys do endgame a little bit differently. So you do get to see a bit of uh, route variances. For, for the most part, up to like this point, it really doesn't change much. Now is when we're going to start seeing a little bit of uh, how they handle everything else from this point on. Trigo. 
Which, it's nice that you get to see Straw go in there, you know? Don't get to see him very often in anything. Yeah, it's always good to see some of the uh, characters that you don't really get to use too much in any of the other runs. Realm, on the other hand, uh, she gets to just keep warming up that bench. Gets to sit beside Gal. Once again, Lion dealing with the fact that the game is defaulting to- Do you want to change your party members? No, I just wanted to see what uh, your thoughts and opinions were here, Edgar. <laughs> Alright, Lion just making sure he gets his equip on. Oh, he's uh, making sure that we... He's getting his... He's basically condensing the menu here. By uh, putting the magical stuff on Terra early on. The Stone Blade is, I think, like one of the only... I'm gonna call it an elemental sword because it casts break. But it's like one of the only, in quotations, elemental sword that uh, doesn't actually raise your magic power. But the Ice Brand, the Flame Tongue, and the Thunder Blade all raise it by the same amount. It's a pretty good amount too, I think. Isn't it like plus five? Sure, I'm, I'm the worst for, for numbers guy. <laughs> Alright, gotcha. So there's but a lot yeah, of times it's definitely like, very helpful to have one of those three uh, on any real magic user. It just it's, it's like having free magic. So Dine's coming up to the the burning house here. Uh, this is another one of those things where we get to manipulate it in SNES, but because there isn't really an NPC value that happens here, we don't get to. However. Every time you enter any zone and there's NPCs there, they don't move for a good second or so. So you can kind of pseudo manip it. I don't, there's two different theories here that work. One is you run into the first enemy right away, and then you can usually burst through the first couple of rooms, then after that you're good. So you can get through a, a two encounter burning house, or you can sit there and wait for a little bit and hope that the flames move out of the way the way that you want them to. And then he can run through and get a zero encounter. I'm actually kind of interested to see who adopts what theory here. M block bug is fixed, physical evasion is a thing, but that doesn't really change much for what we for how our end game goes okay he's just forcing the first fight so like right now he should be able to basically just hold up and left and he should just be able to zoom through everything and then it depends on what he does with this one he was gonna force okay so the only thing here is you kind of hope that the final flame at the top moves out of the way but you can get through these ones pretty easily it didn't all right fair enough Oh, so one, so when I mentioned that, uh, just looking at Lion's thing here, you can mash through holy water, and it always auto targets on the enemies, unless it's a side attack. Then for some reason, it always goes back on the character. But that's the only moment when that actually happens. As to why, I'm not really sure, but uh, the game be like that. It looks like his grind's going fairly well. It hasn't really taken a lot of damage. So Flame Eater, we're hoping to get a steal. Which we do, good. And then use a single ice rod. After all these attacks go through, I guess. 
And it should do, like, max damage. Since when you go into more form, you take half damage and you give twice as much damage. And since Flame Eater only has, like, around 8,000... 8,400 HP. There you go. Then we basically get to see how, uh, Muchihaz goes. I think he adopts the wait for the enemies a little bit more, but I might be wrong on that. So even though I've been trying to keep up with what everyone likes to do, they've been changing up what they like to do lately. <laughs> There's a Dine's lot of cutscenes to go through now. Well, Dine's gonna be coming up to big shop number one here. And he's a big fan of using turbo in it, and I always find it super sketch. It does go faster. I'll give him that. It does go faster. It just, it feels so scary. Mostly because there's a rod in there that we don't want to sell. And it's kind of like in the middle of the weapons. Okay, so Muchiha forces the first one. He's gonna wait, hopefully. Okay, so the flame moved the one direction out of three that we didn't want it to go. <laughs> then he might have been able to get past that last one if he like held upright, but even then, it's one of those where like the NPC hit detection is not Oh, he's skipping the flame rod. Interesting. Oh, wow. Interesting. Maybe he doesn't need it. He must be sitting on a lot of money. That's 46 grand. There's many, they say. 46k, yeah. Alright, Dine didn't sell the flame rod, so that's good. We basically clear out a lot of what we got here. Even things like we get rid of a reflect ring, we get rid of a Hermes sandals, we get rid of some earring. Actually, I don't think he gets rid of earrings in this one. Used to. Mog has a very, very fast flame meter. Yeah, he wasn't getting uh he wasn't getting hit by the, the bombs there, was he? No, no, no. Dine had to kind of sit there and watch that happen because he didn't want to lose Morph Gauge. That's one thing that, in a PB attempt, you can auto battle it through and kind of lose that Morph Gauge, but I think Dine's holding on to as much as he can for, for safety's sake. Because not having that Morph Gauge on Atma Weapon is very scary. Coming up on Ultras 3. Yet another fight with the Octopus. Mm -hmm. They have way too many lives. So does Locke need to steal the White Cape in this, or is that just a nice to have? I believe we need to get the steel for it because we sold it in... We sold the other one in Mobla's. I guess Dine did in Nikia, but same difference. So Ultros here isn't too bad. 
other than it just feels like you just waste so much morph on it still, but even still. In theory, Terra's loaded up, ready to go. He's going to try and get an ATB weight on someone, probably, because like I said, he's going to want to try and hold on to as much of his morph as possible. Or I guess trance. It's trance now. Yeah. My boomer's showing again. Uh, it's still morph to me. Yeah, pretty pretty simple fight for as far as the ultra. Every ultra's fight is pretty simple. Uh, the next one, it's more so what follows. That's a, the big worry. So you'll see Mujiha actually has to get a Gaia gear here because he's going to be rocking with with Strago on on the floating continent and IF. Whereas with Edgar, we can just have a a Mithril vest and call it a day. But Strago can't equip that, so we need the Gaia gear just for actual survivability. Definitely a lot of nasty encounters on Flume Combat. Stuff that you want to make sure you're protected against. One funny thing about the Gaia Gear there is I learned that Life Shaver is Earth Elemental. So if you get hit by it, it actually heals you and it harms the enemy if you have the Gaia Gear on because it does like a 180 on it. Oh, nice. So I remember getting hit by it once and I'm like, why, why am I getting healed here? And someone's like, Life Shaver, it's Earth. All right, I'll trust you on that. I don't know why I would really need to know that, but now I know that. So Diane's gonna be uh, in the massive cutscene central for the next eight, 10 minutes here. Let's see how uh, Mujiha's fight goes. He is not opting for the steal. Unless he tries to go for it at the back end here, but maybe... I don't know if he actually sold his in... in the seven scenario or not either. Typically, we need the white cape so that uh, tier 3 goes less bad. I'm never going to say tier 3 goes good. <laughs> yeah, just way too many things can go wrong on that front. All, all the tiers have their own special way their of little trolling flare. you or outright killing you. So yeah, we talked a bit about it before, but yeah, we can go over it right now. So rods, rods are broken in the sense that they ignore magical defense, they ignore things like reflect. Uh, however, they do variant damage rolls now, instead of always doing the highest damage roll. So they're not as broken, and usually the variance on damage will be like, you could hit something as high as like, we'll say 8,500, you could also hit something as low as like 7,300. So it can make things interesting later on, and we have to assume that we're going to have to throw an extra rod in a lot of situations. Or in other spots, use a couple of rods and then finish off with a magic spell like we might do in Kefka's Tower. So just looking at line screen here, one nice thing about enemies being or not enemies, NPCs being kind of stuck in one spot for like a good second or so, is rooms like this in particular, it's really easy to talk to a lot of the the guards in one spot because they don't move and they always start in the same spot. You can actually almost have like a scripted way to go through it, which is always nice. Especially since 
we're not waiting out the timer here. It actually matters if you go fast in the, the banquet section. Okay, so I just noticed that Leo is poisoned. Uh, okay. You can die in this fight. With uh, Leo versus Kefka. If you get, like, Bio and then a couple of Faragas. Because, uh, poison takes go by really fast in this version. Uh... Oh, a shock for the people. I will say the animation is pretty sick. It is. But yeah, you it's it can get pretty rough if you uh, get hit with a Faraga or a or a Bio on turn one. Mostly the Bio because then you're like, oh no, you can just lose a good almost 200 HP just by. Trying to finish the fight out. I have Cinch dead for Leo. I mean, he dies anyways, I guess, but... It's <laughs> after the battle screen. Fun. Oh, actually, that's a fun thing to mention, too, is... Even if you die in that fight, like, your HP goes down to zero die in that fight... It apparently gives you a game over so that you can die at the end of the fight where you don't get a game over. I guess probably they didn't want speedrunners to uh, just self-target themselves and just get it done quicker like we do in Final Fantasy V. So Lions is going through asking all of his questions. Trying to get his ward bangle. Hopefully Muchiha doesn't have a rough... I don't want to... It's one of those things, like, I don't want to see anyone have a rough Leo fight. But I also want people to be like, oh yeah, this can actually go bad. I think my jaw dropped the first time I saw somebody actually die to this. I was like, wait a second, what? That's possible? <laughs> so yeah, like, it's, it's mostly the poison tick that's the issue. Like that first turn bio, if he hits that and then you know, you're poisoned, it's like, man, you're, very, you're in rough shape. We'll probably see it in uh, the Tentacles fight later on, too. Saps of this game just, they go a little brazy. Also, we opt more for uh, physical attacks because, as we were talking about with, uh, with crits and stuff, you're not supposed to be able to crit if you have an offering. But, uh, you can. So if you get a high roll crit, or maybe two of them in this fight, you can actually uh, save yourself a turn. Oh. Or just get two of them in one turn. Wow. Nice. You know I've seen the 600 damage from one of the hits. Leo's trying real hard to win against Kefka. And look where it got him. It got him dead. No. Well, if you guys weren't done mourning over the first Leo, you can still mourn over this next one. Then you get a little <laughs> bit of a break before you get to mourn over the third one. Lion's just here making sure that he gets the, uh... Well, the alarm earrings are nice because now we don't have to deal with back attacks or pincers anymore, as long as it's equipped. Uh, and then with the ward bangle, we're already getting our PR reduced encounter rate, reduced by another, like, 50%, so there's a lot of spots where you can go a pretty good stretch without getting an encounter. So far, everyone's been having a pretty solid run. Nothing astronomically bad has gone. We've had a little bit of Magitek Factory shenanigans happen, but for the most part, things have been going the way you'd want them to go. 
Any idea how Dawn's doing compared to this PB? Um... If you don't, it's fine. You can look it up later. I'm he told me it. by... Like in Magic Tech Factory, he was only like a minute behind or something, but he also said... Oh, he's 13 seconds behind PB. Wow, that's a sick what? run. What? Despite the fact that he lost 30 seconds on uh, the last Ultra split. So Dine should... Luckily, we kind of aren't going to have too much of a slog happening here because Dine's about to get into IEF here while Line is about to get into Thamasa. Because Thamasa is kind of the go grab your popcorn, go for a bathroom break, but we kind of get to the high octane action for the most part here. Oh, he actually doesn't an equip all here. So, one thing about the IAF here that is actually really good, one thing that the PR does really well that I'm happy with is you can actually do a menu before the first encounter, which you can't in the SNES and DBA, I'm not 100% sure. But just being able to do that makes things a whole lot easier because that, uh, that first fight can really rock your socks because uh, Celeste and Edgar both are unequipped right now. They have absolutely nothing, so we're going to be in a pincer for every single fight with some attacks that do a lot of damage, and we're probably going to see Celeste and Edgar die a good amount already as it is. So when they have absolutely no gear, you're basically like, yeah, as long as anything happens, they're probably going to die. But at least now, we can have a little bit of false hope. So I said, this the is the menu, one spot where The menu we... before the first fight is extremely convenient, and it's very annoying that you can't do that in the semi version. Yep, you have to survive the first one, then be like, okay, now I get to do what I want to do. Just got lucky. Yeah. So, the big thing with the IAF that everyone hates to see but loves to talk about is the Spitfires have three different things that they can do. One, they can do nothing. We love when they do nothing. Two, they can do propeller. We're gonna put people in specific spots so that uh, Celeste, she, so that she's facing that enemy so that uh, she doesn't get back attack propeller and she can live because we want her to learn bio. Or three, they can use absolute zero. And when you see an absolute zero, you're really hoping that the other two enemies don't start using Magitek lasers or else people start hitting the floor really quick. That being said, it's a 1 in 3 chance for every single one of them. I'm pretty sure it's skewed quite highly to absolute zero, actually. It really feels like a 50-50-100, right? Yeah, it really does. No sketch runners know the feel. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> So movement here doesn't really matter. This is a bit of a timed event. Just after a certain amount of time you get into the next fight. You always get the same amount of fights. But uh, we're going to be relying on... Alright, well Celeste doesn't get to live this one. Neither does Edgar. Uh, ooh, Edgar oh boy. To... Good start. I think Terra has... Okay, maybe she doesn't have the... Th oh no, he sold the Thunderblade. She's not going to have the Thunderblade. Yeah. Lots of experience, I guess. Kidoki. So it's pretty typical that you're going to be healing after every fight unless you just don't get attacked by anything. But Ramu is going to be the, the big carry here. Obviously My not Celeste, Celeste because... She... <laughs> Celeste is taking a dirt nap every fight. She just really likes that deck. Now, one thing I guess I haven't mentioned at all is the PR actually gives us Japanese levels of 
uh, MP, which is like a good 25% more. So NA runners are not used to having... Interesting. I think... Okay, that was a mistake. Oh. Okay, she lived. Ooh, no lasers? Okay, what, no more lasers? More lasers? Ooh, the silence. I think it's a turn two spell. All Doesn't right. matter, Celeste got to live one. Congrats, Celeste. Hey. <laughs> We, so, with this MP, we get to be a little more liberal with healing and such. Uh, that being said, we want to make sure that Celeste has at least 5 MP at the end of this, just in the event that, uh... In the event that she gets, like... Oh, no, I guess we have Drill, so it doesn't super matter. But Chupon, we're gonna need to do a Rod and one more extra attack. And because physical evasion actually matters... And then you get to blinded. That blizzard spell will kind of carry you to the promised land. So you'll see Muchiha here goes with Strago instead. So he's going to get the guy gear. And instead of using Drill, first we're going to use an Aqua Breath. He has Bismarck equipped right now. Then he'll learn Thunder since all the robot enemies here are weak to Thunder. Then it'll just be Ramu and then a Thunder. Which is always a pretty interesting little strat. I think he also has the green beret on just to help for uh, a little survivability. We'll bore more absolute zeros. How Mujia's team is like off center like that? Yeah, the it kind of does like a quote unquote row thing, but it's a pincer, so I don't know. It looks really weird. Uh, all right, so those two are supposed to be in the front row then, the quote unquote front row then. I I. Think so. I don't, it it's one of those PR moments. Uh, actually, a really funny PR moment way back in the in like the first version of the game is if you had alarm earrings on, uh, all of these pincers turned into regular battles, and your characters were just floating in the sky. But unfortunately, they patched that out, so it was actually Fun really cool. See. Yeah, it was the one time IF didn't suck. <laughs> okay, so we just need to use a single Fyra to push Ultros, and then we get Typhon here. I guess it's Typhon here. He's the Chupon. Bring back Chupon. Yeah. Yeah, he's just gonna go with the drill. And then hold on to as much morph as possible. Uh, once your party gets blown away, you can auto battle off since your ATB generation stops. And then this is the fight that we worry about. Depending on the opener, things can... Yep, that's... Depending on that opener. Oh, no. He... Should be okay, because Terra that didn't get fight. hit by the... By the Atomic Ray. I have no idea how much magic points Celeste actually got for learning bio. Um, he's definitely going to have to take an extra encounter before we get to Gigantos, but we'll uh, see how he rocks this. In the meantime, Choco is about to start the, f the flaming house. Gonna do flame eater soon. And Mog is just wrapping up IF. So you're going to be seeing a lot of Shote here. Oh, that's unfortunate. Oh, he does no break at least. That's good. Typically, Shote hits pretty much everything. So it's kind of unfortunate when you get the one where it doesn't actually hit. So we're going to want... Only Celeste to live the end of this fight, because Gigantos just gives so much experience. And we're gonna want to get her to... Oh, what have they changed it to now? 
I believe it's like 21-ish. We want her to get to 22, okay. So basically the poison ticks are gonna do everything for us at this point. As you can see, they're, uh, they're coming out pretty frequently. Gigantos has 6,000 HP. He definitely did not learn by it. Uchiha's just finishing up boss fight. We, we got two boss fights going on at the same time here. Locke actually coming through with the steel. You love to see it. Uchiha's getting into the scary eye uh, fight, though. Hopefully he doesn't get the atomic rakes. That's like the one thing you don't want to see. <laughs> Never mind. We're uh, we're just all right. staring it all around. Oh, we really wanted that aqua breath to go off for this strat. Uh, yep, didn't get any split damage on that laser either, so uh. I'm assuming Muchiha oh. did a quick save before. He did. Okay, he good. Did. So we'll you just have are to pretty. Chupon fight again. Yeah, if you didn't quick save there, you have to redo the entire. This entire section again. And this is this is one of those fights where like it, like there's nothing he could do there. You got one turn off, and then half of your team was dead. And then by the time you got to your next turn. All of your team was dead. Alright, let's see if uh, this one's a little bit kinder. Meanwhile, you know, Dynes is rocking through, uh, getting experience just on Terra and Celeste. Edgar, your experience really doesn't matter. The laser is fine. The missile on Strago, that's fine. From this point on, the fight is won. So, fun fact, the, the bit that does the most amount of damage with that atomic laser isn't the main body. It's the bit on the right side of the screen or the left side of IAF. That's the one that does most of the pain and damage, which I only learned like a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I think I saw Dine run away from a fight, so he must have hit his levels. Never mind. Nah, he must have been a bad uh, encounter. Cells was silenced in the previous fight. Oh, that'll happen too. Yeah. So with that, she can't do magic, including dropping the SP. So, dragons? He might actually take it here. Okay, he's just gonna try and stipe in as much experience as he can to Celeste right now, because she's only 19. Dragons, we don't. Get another dragon. Come on, game! bit short of a... Uh... What's funny is, if this was SNES, you would love to see all these dragons. But uh, because we don't have the magic power to kill them with a... With a Thunder Rod... Here we are. Yep. Ooh! This is fine. He has to heal anyway. Uchiha is starting to make a bit of a comeback on this FC here. There you go. That got him up to 21. Yeah. And another dragon! Oh no! Uchiha is like actually going to use the... Ooh, that's a lot of morph used up.
Okay, now he's 22. That was... that was a very rough FC. And we still... we still need to go through a lot of Oh no. Oh no! Oh no! Mujiha, get out of there! Okay, okay, he actually got lucky with- Oh no! They got another turn! What? So, ninjas, uh, cannot die to... Oh, to spells, no. To the, to the break spell. Um, so that's just really unfortunate. Alright, so he did have... He did a quick save. I did see him do a quick save. He's been quick saving regularly. And yeah, autosave doesn't get you anywhere here, because it's all one big massive area. And fun fact about Flare, even though we talk about how you uh, take half damage as Terra in Morph form, uh, Flare doesn't care about your magic defense at all. Oh, and there's this is this is why we don't. Oh, she lived. Atma gets to really just throw out a lot of his nasty attacks here, and this this is another one of those fights where it's just really rough. Should be okay. Yeah, okay. I see that should be the kill. Made it through. And he got Thundara, which is good. Runikin with Celeste is gonna be bad because then she's gonna runic the rods. And we kinda need those rods to do damage. So you're kind of in a rock and a hard place. I've thought about like throwing in some like runic strats for like a turn, but then you could also get something like Quake, or you could just get a physical, and then you just wasted a Celeste turn runicking when you could have put a little extra damage with the bio. It's it's all a huge damage roll at the end of the end of it. So Muchiha doesn't have to do a whole bunch of grinding in front of Apple Weapons, so let's see how this fight goes. Lion looks like he uh, ran out of morph, so he has to uh, take out Ultros the old-fashioned way. Sketch, sketch, sketch. You tried. <laughs> oh, I don't oh. think she's sketching no more. Yeah, there goes Realm. <laughs> Goodbye, Realm. Thanks, Realm. That's the one thing you got to do today. See how Muchi House fights. So we actually use Aqua Breath because it's actually pretty strong. Actually, his ammo weapon is going pretty smooth so far. And he actually used the. Of course, this is the one where. Oh, he used Bio. I thought he was going to use Flare. Uh, that's pretty much a textbook fight for what you want from ammo weapon. That's a, that's about as good as it's gonna get. It's we did really have good. the reflect ring on on Edgar, but he ate a blaze which ignores reflect, and then after that we just kind of got raffle stomp for the rest of that fight. And yeah, Muchiha able to pick up some time. Yeah. Mind hmm. running into. Loading continent nonsense. Which yeah, they didn't get nearly as we got the ninjas, but they didn't get like one dragon. No, I think I'd take the one ninja death over the five, six dragons that dying got. <laughs> yeah. So we're here leaving Floating Continent. There are two naughty fights that are static tile placements. Other than that, you're kind of hoping you don't get any more. Because Dines had to go through a lot of elixirs and X potions. I don't know if he's going to pick up the elixir and then, and then go and leave, or if he's just going to forget about it.
What would you do, BD? I grab that elixir every time. <laughs> yeah, I pick it up. <laughs> I know, I know how this end game goes. This end game is scary. Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure Dolph is gonna die, but who cares about him? And there's also some like random situations where it'd be like it'll just be easier and quicker to throw one out so if you have that one extra one you don't have to really think about it as much all right here comes shadow this is the last we see of him on dying screen Yep, here he is, ruining the world. Good job, Shadow. <laughs> hey, he Thanks. tried his best. Okay, so the one forced fight is right in this little counter. Or, okay, so he is actually going to get a, an extra encounter here. Uh, we can kill everything here with a single Thundara. I think Dine put Bismarck on Celeste for at least one fight so that she knows fire. Otherwise, a freeze on Terra ends up being very unfortunate, since we don't have uh, any flame tongues at all. Actually, I think we do, but it's on Terra right now. Lion is busy. Not dying to Kefka, so that's or, yeah, that's good. Oh, he's being really nice. Two physicals and a thunder. It's the fight you tell your children about. Locked by him. Nice to see. He is grabbing the elixir. So this strat is pretty fun. So we don't want to use an extra rod at all. So Nalapa here, formerly known as Narapa, uh, has wall. But uh, so does Edgar, and you can't double reflect. So, reflect once, goodbye boss. I like that strat way more than I actually should. It's a good strat. And now he is off to the world of ruin. This is when the run actually starts. Everything else up to this point, that was just warm up. Now the fun begins. See, the other forced fight, by the way, is this one right here that Muchiha gets. I don't think they've got a, an extra encounter so far. I don't think so. He made it through the first one uh, from the start. First forced fight without any extra encounter. And uh, you'll see that he queued up a smoke bomb on Celeste as well. This is going to be basically setting up for World of Ruin so he can just auto battle through the next fight. And then Lion's about to, uh, he's getting close to his IF uh, floating continent fun times. You know, after Kefka has his fun at the Massa, that is. Shadow's fine. You know, it's like a comic book character. If you don't see the character <laughs> die, they're probably alive. Other than the part Somewhere. where Gogo 
doesn't actually have the throw ability, which means that he can't actually mimic it off of anybody, which means Shadow's actually probably dead. But it's fine! See, that's why we also can't do no sketch in the relay race, because then we'd actually have to wait for Shadow. It's okay, you can would... just do memes. Like you know me, Pharaoh. I'm not a scene. I'm I'm not a meme type of person. You know this. Excuse me. Bold faced lie. Memes and beauty is like water and oil. <laughs> <laughs> Got to bring all your uh, sound effects and things like that back. Oh no. Yeah. We'll hear Taco again. Okay, we can borrow Maelstrom soundboard for sure while we wait for Shadow. Have some fun. So, Dine is coming up to the, the little Sid section here. We do still try to save Sid. Uh, the, the fishing is randomized, but the placements where the fish always go is always in a static spot. So, it's whatever the, the two fish on the top right part of the, the beach are the ones that we want. Now, you can save them in four cycles. Uh, you can actually save them in four cycles without having four perfect beaches. So that's always nice. But uh, we'll just have to see what the game gives. He does have double sprint shoes on. He was trying to go extra, extra fast. <laughs> <laughs> very, very fast. All right, so this is a good start. Dude, like how you're so quick, you can talk to Sid before he even gets into the bed. Yeah, he's busy sauntering his way over there, and then you're just like, here, just eat this fish while you make it to bed. Okay. Okay, so we had a two and then a one with the good fish, so we can still, we're still in four cycle mode here. As long as we get two good fish here, I don't know if one. Like, the good fast fish here will actually save or not. Well, we're going to find out. Mm -hmm. It does. Wow. wow. Okay. Fast. I don't think I've actually seen the the 2-1-2-1, two, one, two, one, but the ones were the, the fish that heal for 32 HP instead of 16. So I was like, all right, that's apparently that's all you need. That's what a four times speed will give you. Fastest fish possible is a four cycle, so that's basically what we can get. Might actually even be faster because he had to pick up two less fish. Yeah. So we got the warp from Sid to the bed <laughs> after opening up the door. Yeah, Don even says, How did that fishing actually work? I don't know, dude. It just did. I don't know how close we got to, like, just hitting the threshold. Moochie on the other hand, gets Empty Beach. Yeah, empty Beach twice in a row, right? And you have to talk to Sid to yeah. reset the... the beach RNG. Well, it gave him one. Sounds like Dine's gonna keep up with the uh, double sprint shoe strat. <laughs> Yep, double sprint shoot. It's it's all an RNG manip with it, you know? It's like, oh, you want to go fast? We'll give you fast. Clearly. There's Kefka's Tower. We'll not be going there for a little bit. I like the teasy with it right away, though. Yeah, this is a bit of a rude fishing segment for Moo. when we start chanting, we miss my nips. <laughs> it's a double-edged sword, because, like, if you have this kind of fishing and it's not manipulated, you're like, man, I miss manipulations. But if you have this kind of fishing because you filled your manip, you're like, oh, man, I wish I could just blame RNG. <laughs> There's no winning. 
Oh, he's still going. I thought that one was going to get him close, at least. Yeah, I thought that would have been it. Oh, well, they keep giving us the, the 16 HP fish. That's this thing is being very rude. And then, of course, it gives him all the fish that he needs when he doesn't even need them anymore. So Dine here is in Nikia. He's actually going to talk to all of these guys first and then talk to Dusty Garad here and then actually start doing the shopping so he can start making his way because he moves so slow. He can actually start making his way while we're trying to do a little bit of shopping. Which I guess with this, we just buy a single enhancer and call it a day. Doing a little bit of body blocking on Red Vest. Everybody hates Red Vest guy. He will Unless always get in the way. Kid, the Red Vest guy. Well, the kid like... doesn't go crazy fast in this version. He, he just goes at normal speed. Pixel Remaster does have the mode 7 Chocobo riding, but it's kind of jank with the with the hitbox of it. So you get a lot better movement on it if you go into just your regular 2D mode. I'm gonna mention in chat, it's not the same without Dine singing the Chocobo song. So do Everybody we think Dine sings the Chocobo song to himself while he's in this type of situation? I think he sings it in the shower. What about Moustache Man? I think he sings that one too. He's just out there singing all the songs to himself. Well, that wouldn't surprise me either. How else does he get so good at it? <laughs> exactly. He gets all the practice. Lion actually has had a pretty nice section here so far on uh, I. Uh... I don't so think I've seen a single bio form. Well, see, that's a good question because there seems to be like this weird bug where if she lives every single fight, she gets the same amount of magic points as if she was dead for one fight. And then sometimes it seems like she can be dead for an extra fight and learn it, where she can be alive for everything and not learn it. So there's like some weird bug with the the magic points here or something. Okay, even though we saw an absolute zero, nothing bad. Like, everyone gets to keep living. You're, you're loving life if this is your IF. Muchiha's shop is going to be a little bit different here. We're also making sure that the ones digit of our GP doesn't get divisible into our level. So right now a 9 is safe, and this is so that we don't get absolutely nuked when we get to Dulahan. So I think Muchiha's level 20 here, I think? Anyways, the GP ends in 9, so there's not a lot of options for... ...for it to be divisible into that we do. Because 18 is way too low and 27 is way too much grinding. The best guy was very nice to get him on. Excuse me, sir, let me get out of the way. <laughs> yeah. You had the I bad fishing, go them. right ahead. Yeah, no, it's trying to make it up for the bad fishing. Uchi, I was blocking a little kid too, making sure he wasn't able to get me to the lane. So if you want to see what Sap kind of does in this game with auto battle and just the way that uh, just Saps in general seem to work, uh, if Edgar gets grabbed in this fight, that is pretty much a GG's, unless the thing dies. Because you will see the ticks on the sap happen almost instantaneously, one after the other. If he gets the GP at zero, uh, the entire system that we know as this world collapses in on itself, and uh, we cease to exist. Oh, don't cast Doom on Celeste. That'd be bad. So we use 
Doom on the one on the bottom left, because it's the only one that absorbs ice. And now we can just kind of go ice, we can poison these guys. I think the top left one is the only one that doesn't actually get poisoned. If I remember my no sketch. And this fight is actually... I can't believe Edgar's getting away with it. Are we going to have Edgar live this fight? I'm a little bit worried that Celeste is, uh, poisoned. So she should be okay. Okay, she's okay. There you go, she made it. Okay. Both made it. Uchiha getting double muddled. Just want to get out of this fight, man. Lion barely- I didn't even see that fight. Lion barely makes it through IAF. Perfectly according oh. to plan. <laughs> Two digits of HP in the dream. I think that might be the first time I've ever seen Edgar survive tentacles, by the way. Usually he gets hit with the slow, and once you get hit with slow, then you can get grabbed, and then and then he dies in seconds. <laughs> so the fact that he does didn't get hit by that, I'm like, oh, interesting. Good things can happen. Did that say he has four smoke bombs left, or is that 14? I'm really hoping that was 14, not four. Okay, so Lion actually has a pincer here, which honestly makes this fight a little awkward. Just for targeting reasons. And you don't want to auto battle too much because you don't want Gigantos to die from the ticks. Yeah, okay. She's dead now. Okay, good. Okay, good. You don't want that split experience because, like I said, he gives so much where Celeste goes from like 14 to 18. Dine is coming up here. He's going to be buying a debilitator because we didn't get that low chance steal. This is used for one fight, but it makes that one fight possible. Goddess really is just a huge puzzle for trying to route this world of ruin. And um, Muchi has just started tentacles. A little bit of a difference here where. Lucky. So, because he didn't bring Edgar to IAF, Celeste is the one who knows death instead of Edgar, so you kind of rely more on Celeste in this fight, and he just kind of goes straight into using Doom, and then, well, he gets to use one drill at least. Now watch his HP go. Watch that HP drain. Tick, 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 dead. Oh, no, he lived! No way! <laughs> <laughs> wow. I can't believe he released with <laughs> one tick remaining to kill. <sighs> A kind tentacles fight so far. Okay, confirmed. Uh, Dine does only have three smoke bombs left, so that's going to get a little rough. Oh, we, can, yeah. uh, we can thank Floating Continent for that one. Dragons ain't up like six of them. <laughs> Which, funny enough, if he had six of them, you wouldn't even be worried about his uh, smoke bomb count right now. Oh no, Lion didn't pay attention to the. He's nine MP short of being able to cast his uh, his shot here. Okay. We got the bug! Yeah. That's the smoke bomb bug. Oh, Dine didn't want to use two smoke bombs in that fight? <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Lion seems to be moving through FC pretty, pretty quickly, actually.
getting some good encounters too. That's helping yeah, out like, a lot. Coming into this, he's always complaining about like, man, this game only gives me dragons, and it's getting really annoying. So it's nice to see that he's not getting only dragons. The fact that he's 21 here and he just needs one more fight is promising. Because 22 is a bit of a high order to get, but this might get him there. It's nice that he still has... It does. Cool. Got it. And now for Atma Weapon. Totally not worried about Atma Weapon. It's fine. Yeah, you'll see Dine's just doing uh, manual runaways here. Just trying to save the smoke bombs for... Either he's used them all up already, or he's saving them for an encounter like a pincer or a back attack. So he's a little bit unfortunate with the... the usage of them. At least he doesn't need Edgar to run away, being a, a zombie and all. Oh, true. That is a weird mechanic. I kind of feel like he's there, so we should have to run away. Or die. Uh, we live in a universe where the, the zombies don't run. Oh, no. Okay, he did get... Line did get two rods off, at least, with the... Oh, there's the quake. Yeah. Atma is not being kind to Lion. Everyone, welcome to Atma Weapon. Oh, man. I can't even blame him on that. I was just... That's just a super unfortunate series of events. Usually what I say is, oh yeah, it just looks like the boss just played that perfectly. GG's boss. I got the party-wide blaze off and then followed it up with the uh, quake there. With the quake. Yeah. The what really should be like a turn four. Oh, okay. At least it was... Okay, you know what? That actually... Other than the fact that that was a high pot and stuff, if Lion could tell the future and use... Wow, another Quake? Thanks, Gabe. Yeah. Uh, nice. Looking over on Dine's thing here, we're going to be using Carbuncle Strat so that uh, Doolahan doesn't nuke us with a whole bunch of Lazagas here. Uh, should be like a four or five round fight. And we're good. We we've changed up the strats a little bit too. Instead of casting Phantom in that fight, we're gonna cast Phantom at the start of the grind. The grind can be quite volatile, which is what everybody wants in a grind. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> uh, so the first little bit, we can either get an encounter that gives us. Five magic points, which is pretty good, and experience, which is good because we're trying to grind experience. Or we can get one that gives us ten magic points, pretty good for learning spells, lots of money, but zero experience, which is not good if you're trying to learn magic. She lived a full power to the face? I never would have guessed it. I see we're reverting to using fire right here, so I'm a little bit worried about our, our rod can't- Oh, Celeste is gonna die to a tick here. Oh, he got through! Come on, live, live, live. Just- just the way we drew it up. Oh, that was rough. I made it through the fight. That's all that counts. Alright, Mog is about to start the hand now. I don't remember if Muchiha tries to 
with this strat, there is a chance that he'll throw a, a phantom at the end of this fight. Yeah, so like, the fun thing about uh, Lion's fight there is he literally played that as well as he could have. And he still just got nuked really quick anyways. Muchia is able to get off the Phantom himself. One has the Vanish status now. And unfortunately, uh, the fishing was just too rough. We lie and get some good fishing. I am not a fan of Adma. No, it's one of those fights where in SNES you take for granted the fact that it's a scripted fight. And then when you come to here, you're like, you know what? I miss when he only did one attack. <laughs> I've thought about, like, using, like, slow strats in that fight as well, but with the way that auto battle works, I don't think it's really gonna cut down his attacks much anyways. You may see, like, one less attack, but if he's killing you by turn three anyways, I don't think it really ends up mattering too much, and you may as well just nuke him down. At least everyone gets to uh, kind of sit back and just just breathe a little bit. We've had a a lot of things happen in this last little bit. Mm -hmm. yeah, at the moment, everyone in a cutscene, so everyone getting a little breather here. Move on to the grind for Muchi and Dime. Second half of Float and Continent. So this grind can just like lose you. A couple minutes if it wants to and so like so we're gonna be in the the desert here uh, we're gonna make sure that I believe we get Edgar or Edgar and Setzer to 24 just to help with level averaging and then we're gonna off them and then it's uh, the Celeste show for, for the next little bit. It's like Cactuars are, are not what we want. Slagworms are what we want. Uh, we did put a growth egg that we picked up in Doolahan's, or I guess Daryl's tomb, onto Celeste. So she's going to be getting double experience on every fight. Which uh, really adds up. Oh. Uh, I as see long we as didn't you miss. Phantom. Oh, I see that we're was... going to Phantom now. Oh. This is the rough thing with having Edgar kind of do everything. Is on that Cactuar fight, you didn't want a Phantom because then you're just going to start getting hit by a thousand needles, which is a magical spell, and that's just going to bypass your Phantom could have done it on the last leg where am I think you might have just kind of forgot about it this is good though this is what you want and yeah you don't want to attack sandworm with anything else because then he's going to use or slagworm with anything else because then he uses sandstorm and that also takes away well it's it's going to kill us is what it's going to do this I think should get Edgar and Setzer 24 yep. He's going for one more. Oh, I think he's trying to make it so that uh, Setsu can learn Vanish. So a Cactuar here is actually not bad, if this is what he's going for. Oh, we got a Cura spell learned, I guess. Cool. All right. Oh, that's on uh, that's on Setsu. That's one of the small changes, is putting Unicorn on Setzer and he learns Kira so that we don't have to rely so much on... on High Pots. 
and we go off to the much more consistent part of the grind, which is Doma Castle here. There's three different encounter types I think we can get. Uh, the one that we really like is Tumbleweeds, because they give like 20,000 experience to Celeste. This one isn't bad either. So we're going to be killing off Setzer and Edgar because they have done what they need to do. Meanwhile, which uh, appears to have killed Setzer, probably reached the level he needed to be, and he's just going to grind a little bit more with uh, Selvis and Edgar. Yeah, with this you're mostly just wanting... You also want Setzer to make sure that uh, he learns fire off of Bismarck, so that uh, when we get to, to Doom, he, uh, in case he uses that fun little spell we like to call Northern Cross, we aren't just sitting there being like, well, I guess I can't do anything anymore. Does Dine have an alarm earring? I feel like that would be really helpful about now. He... I think he changed it up here. Doesn't soup... I mean, it... Obviously it helps because then you don't have to watch the extra animations. Yeah. One little thing that we did do is we take off uh, the shield here so that you don't get the block. Oh, he didn't take off the shield here. All right, what do I know? We used to take off the shield so that you don't get the block animation and it saves you a little bit on every little attack. Nah, Alarm Arena is very uh, so last year. We are strong enough to start uh, nuking things down to one turn, at least. Like I said, we're at least in the consistent part of the grind now, whereas Muchiha is still in possible Cactuar mode. He got one so far. He's got two so far. Oh, okay, I saw one. I used to have a theory that every time you got a oh. Cactuar, if you change the character on screen, you might not get another one. I've been proven wrong on this, but it makes me feel better like I can maybe do something. <laughs> so I believe everybody is going for just level 42 Celeste instead of 47. The tumbleweeds are just are getting things. closer to the airship, so I think he only needs one more encounter. Yeah, he grinded up to 36 there. Interesting. He might be trying to forge some rods, I'm guessing. Because you can leave there as soon as 32. Now he's just swapping it so that he can get the earring on Celeste so that she can actually... So Edgar had the earring so that he could kill him and sets her off with just a bio spell. Now Celeste is going to need it so that he can just, you know, do more magical damage with the rods and such. Where's their time for Mog to catch up? The rest of the run. Every single boss fight. Nothing Ears is safe. Are a thing. No matter how safe you try to run it, like it it's still possible that you could just wipe on one of the tiers. It's so tier this, sh this should be his Dine's last fight. He hits 42 and he should be out 500. You're always happy once you get out of this grind. I mean, you're most so happy once you get out of the desert. Lion's got some fishing going on. I, this might be a second cycle. I might miss the first one. But that one looked good. No, no, no. There, there, is, there is no mitigation in the Pixel Remaster for RNG. In fact, I would argue that it's... Mm, it's a little bit worse just because of auto-battling, mostly. 
Auto battle is the cause of and solution to all of our problems. <laughs> Lion got a, a not good beach there. Should be one more fight for Muchiha too, and then we're off to the races. So this encounter is always weird because of the the Mantidia in there. It gives a lot of experience, but it is a oh I see how he's gonna go about this. Interesting. It is always a turn two. Uh, okay. Dine opted to use a teleport stone to get out of that fight. He was out of smoke bombs, right? He is out of smoke bombs. I thought he was just going to manually run, but uh, this means that he either has to manually run out of Narsh, which is probably what he's going to do, because he's not going to want to manually run out of Zone Eater. Ooh. Nice. He went to go open the empty chest. Oh no wait, he ha he actually right, bought an yeah. extra teleport stone early on. Nice. What a smart lad. <laughs> I like having the extra teleport sp stone. Well, we I usually only use buy... In, uh, yeah, I, t I tend to use one in uh, dual hands. Yeah, like we don't use any of them. Like, no teleport stones in dual hands cave here. Because it's just so much better just to rock your way through it. But uh, I guess he still got the one extra just in case, and uh, it's paying dividends here. Nice, worked out really well. The way Saban's asking if there's an Edgar route for PR. Wasn't the original beat run for this uh, Edgar not, Heavy? Not original, but we did have Dragoon Ed as like the. I guess it's like two or three versions ago. Okay, green guy, whenever you're ready. There you go. Yeah. When they released it, Man Eater was busted. So yeah, so it... Drill and Man Eater stacked on each other, so Drill was doing the times two damage on humanoid targets, which uh, was really good on on with the tears. And then they fixed that and were like, ah, oh, we can still use Dragoon Ed and it still works out pretty well. We're like, but this is only doing single target damage. But then we're like, hey, we could just make Celeste really good again and go to like 47. And then we're just like, hey, we could just make her be a little bit worse and do less of a grind. And then now we have 42 Celeste again. It's kind of gone full circle, really. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's kind of what it sounds like. Dine picking up the Thunder Shield. There's a sun meter for some log. See how his green guy goes. Oh, much better. It's actually a lot easier to get away from him if you're only like two spots away. Whereas in the SNES, you're like, I need at least three spots of, of clearance or else I'm, you're going to bump me. The peanut asked us a good question. Did you know how to use GoGo the first time? I did because apparently I am one of those people that always like to check stats. And so then I got there and I'm like, oh, why is there a thing here? This is interesting. And then Dine was making fun of me. He's like, why were you checking stats when you were a kid? I'm like, I mostly just wanted to see how much till the next level up. So we basically sell house here in Dine Strat um, to try and get as many Holy Rods as we can. We taper it off by one because Holy Rods are really expensive because we still, he's probably going to want to buy some smoke bombs. I'm going to guess at the very least. And then uh, get some safety phoenix down, some high potions. And uh, away we go. It looks like he has 11 holy rods. Is that 
Eleven is, is the that's the bare minimum that you want for this route. So I was talking with Lion and Dine yesterday, and it was like, eleven is fine, twelve is comfy. He had to sell a high potion just to be able to grab the 14th. So I think yeah, he did the, the, uh, the item shopping before he hopped in to do the armor and weapon shopping. With a moose strat, we, we use a, a few more holy rods in it as well, so it's a little bit more of a suck on the money. Hopefully, Lion has a, a nice walk through Figaro cave here because uh, it can be really rude. Yeah, Muchi almost ran into that, but luckily he was able to get hit, so he didn't have to run into the, uh, er Yeah, when he was confused, he was able to get out of it pretty quickly. Confused and then confused and then finally got to run. Alright, first encounter and Dying gets a back attack. Love to see it. Pincer, the neck hunters. Oh no! Oh no! Okay, they both went there for the physicals. Yes. Yeah, guys, gonna go for a little bit of a heal. So I do know that uh, they were talking about Dine and Lion were talking about uh, picking up the Aegis Shield because it allows. Celeste to survive the Forsaken, I guess, a little bit better. Which is a, a thing that we didn't used to do. No, we used to do it, and then we didn't do it, and apparently now, for, for safety reasons, they're, they're doing it. It makes this part a little more consistent, at the very least. Yeah, that move hurts. Oh, you... Now, if you're doing like a PB attempt, you're probably gonna skip the ages and just hope that you don't die. But uh, since hoping to not die here just loses you like a good 12, 13 minutes, I think they're just gonna lose the 30 seconds of grab it. How many back attacks is this guy gonna get? I'm pretty sure yeah, that's three tower's four back attack. Fine. Hey, look, you can get regular encounters. That's crazy. <laughs> Alright, so this is a little bit of a detour for the, the Age of Shield. So we should actually be having a little bit of a convergence here pretty quick. That's, or, is Edgar going to live all three of these tentacle fights? That would be so cool. I'm From me never seeing it to three in a row, what, what even is life? Nice. <laughs> well, Mujiha is not going to grab the, the Aegis Shield because of route differences. So this fight is uh, kind of scary because it depends on what Buddy here decides to do. Uh, hopefully you get hit with stuff like Gigavolt and Thundara so you can heal yourself. Or uh, luckily Atomic Ray is going to do nothing since the Minerva is going to negate all the fire damage there. Dude, I'm trying so hard not to be biased. Don't, don't call me out on it. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've but, been uh, doing a pretty good job of being impartial at this. Oh, 
All right, making They're it through. They're both going down at the same time. This is so close. So, uh, yeah, this is gonna come down to, do I get good encounters or not? How did my boss fights go? This is, there's so much variance that can happen. Like, Dine didn't get a single encounter on that whole walk. Like, that's... There, there's gonna be small variances like that that can just change things up. You can just feel the tension, eh? I know. Yeah. Everyone's just like, oh wait, yeah, I gotta say, hey, Lion's gonna buy a debilitator here. Did he also buy auto crossbow? I think he accidentally bought auto crossbow mashing. The the okay. the shop menus are a little little awkward because you like watch everything kind of phase in and then you get to go through. Where instead of just being able to shop immediately. Sorry, lion buddy. <laughs> yeah, this is. This comes down to, like, your boss fights. There's also some scary encounters you can get in uh, these next rooms here as well. So we don't get any. Yeah, this one. Wait, what? All right, able to get out really quick. That one can just. Uh, yup, he's he's. Okay, no, I thought you were gonna throw the ribbon on. Those guys can cast freeze. They can uh, they can waste so much time just by making you unable to run. It is glorious and amazing. Dine and Muchi are really sick though. This is very fun to watch. <laughs> They're like doing screen transitions and stepping on switches at the exact same time. Okay, so Guardian. Um uh, probably the least scary of the fights in here, but that doesn't mean that it isn't a scary fight. Uh, we're kind of hoping for not getting any scary openers. Like, we didn't get hit by a missile early on, so that's fine. Magitek laser shouldn't... No, it actually might matter a little bit. So I believe we use a lot more rods in this strat, where, uh, in the 47 strat, we used to use just a lot of Thundara and just kind of let it rock. Tentacle's unfortunate. Uh, it has 60,000 HP. He's going to be swapping his shields there just to kind of mitigate magical and physical damage. Okay, there goes the last Thunder Rod. And he makes it through. <laughs> uh, Muchiha does get the missile right off the hop. Um, also unfortunate. The missile does the sap. Yeah. Which, if Tentacle comes through, that's when it starts to get really scary. Oh, but looks like we didn't get Tentacle. That might have been Stone? Oh, Celeste is in a blocking mood today. You love to see it. Uh, Poltergeist is... So... Poltergeist has a thing where they'll use... So I guess it's Demon. No, no! Stop all! So, Blaster ribbon, can miss. Blaster can also not miss. So, at one point, we're like, oh, okay, it can hit if you have more than one character. Then there was a point there where oh. we had like. It was like, uh. I had like three blasters miss, and I'm like, maybe it doesn't hit if you have single target. Whatever. And then, uh. And then we turned out, no, it's just actually a stamina check. And, uh, stop will happen after, I guess, four turn, probably? It's an HP threshold attack. It might be three. I don't exactly know where the exact threshold is. 
But then after this, uh, there's only one more attack that can actually damage us. It's a one-third chance to get it, and... I don't know what our stats are exactly, but like roughly 50% chance for it to hit. Lion is going into Duel Hand. It's so hard to watch Oh, Muchiha ate the Medio, but because of the red cap that we throw on, uh, he actually survived it. That's the one attack that we don't want, by the way. Alright, this next Blizzaga, I think, kills for Mu as well. Well, other than that one unfortunate death, uh, both combatants got through it pretty quickly. Now comes the next Monk uh, S boss fight. If you know anything about this boss fight, you need to know that it is weak to Pearl, or Holy. We're gonna be using a lot of Holy. In fact, that is our entire home run swing. Uh, he also has an ability called Force Field, which uh, negates an entire element. We hope he doesn't do Holy. That is it. Actually, that's not it. There's, there's more unfortunate things that can happen here. Lots of freezing. Yeah, don't use the ice rod. He, he absorbs yeah. ice. <laughs> Wanted to target him with the ice rod. Right? Oh, now I was just Wanted waiting to, to see if Mog was going to die there or not. <laughs> There's Northern Cross. We hate to see it. Oh, no! The double freeze? The double Ooh. freeze? Oh, no. Thank you, Magic Evasion Setzer. Appreciate it, buddy. Are they're blocking both of his people blocking the Northern Cross. Yeah. He's he's living life pretty good on this fight. Should be getting close to the kill setup here. It, it's not over until it's over. It's still world immunity. Northern Cross. Something. <laughs> All right, how good are you at reading? I don't know what immunity oh, that was. It wasn't Pearl. You got the water. I mean, it's a one eighth chance, but it sure seems to show up a lot. <laughs> it does show up a lot. Pearl immunity kills so many runs. Chat said it was ice immunity. <laughs> Now we're actually using the Kira spell that we learned. Cool. So coming up to Goddess here, uh, this fight can also get a little bit scary. So we're going to be using this Debilitator to specifically get Pearl Immunity, or Holy Immunity. Uh, I learned how the Debilitator actually works. I thought it just changed the the weakness and then every time you use it it just changes that weakness what it actually does it does basically what force field does and it stacks those weaknesses so you can get something weak to all eight elements eventually uh so it should only take eight tries maximum for how many times to get to holy which uh looks like muchiha got her on the first try i got poison and earth oh okay i thought i saw him go down to he must have just been going down there preemptively Holy was in there? Yeah. Alright, so he did get holy. And then he got ice. And now from this point on the, the fight is uh is pretty much won. Unless Well Unless Gogo -Go doesn't get hit by a thunder spell. Cause Quasar can technically kill here. Stop blocking the thunder, Gogo. -Go. And you don't want to use anything. Because then you ruin your okay. There you go. And then because then you ruin your mimic. Oh, 
Ed lives this fight too. Yeah, a uh, Quasarless fight no is a good fight. No Quasar, very good fight. It is definitely a survivor today. Huh? Okay, we get a holy immunity on the second try. A little bit of time save here. Uh, where did that go? No. Uh, I think because of the entice. Yeah, Dine has to reset yeah, this fight. I was just going to try. Ooh. Oh. Muchiha heading into the tears fight. A little bit of a cutscene before that first. Yeah, and Tice basically makes it so the person that it hits is just going to keep on keep on attacking your own people, and then you you lose your mimic that he already had going on. He only has enough holy rods for for this fight and then the final fight. All right, this is fourth tried to bill. We're gonna go for five and six. No. There's five. <laughs> Come on, Gabe. These statues are making Dine suffer. She's gonna be weak to everything. Yep, and it's course eight of eight. Thanks, game. We basically got holy immunity right here. Oof, that was bad. Go on. So, soft locking in the tears is definitely a thing that happens more often than it should. That's been a day one issue. Um, it doesn't happen a lot, but it definitely happens more than it should. He technically can use whatever element he wants in this fight. Uh, Holy just has the highest oh. base damage, which is why we use it. And, uh, yeah, he was kind of, just kind of rocket from there. Right. You guys made it through the goddess. Also, we need all the other rods for other parts in the fight. Coming up here. Lion looks like he's finishing up his part of the grind here. Now, the tears fights aren't exactly what I would call consistent. There's, there's a plan that we like to follow, and if it happens, we're happy with it. That doesn't happen a lot, but it can happen. Okay, didn't get reverse polarity on the first turn, so that's uh, that's usually the first thing you worry that's about. That's already a good start. Yeah. And okay, Edgar is basically going to be vanishing everybody now that we're not worried about any magical spells for the rest of this. And this is going to kind of help a little bit for tier two, but. Probably not, just with the way that, uh, Tiger and, well, mostly Tiger, mostly Tiger and Machine go ahead and start doing their stuff. Dread is a little unfortunate. I don't know if he bought extra rem- I'm assuming he bought extra remedies. Good question. Let's see what Gogo -Go does here. Yeah, not the remedy. I wasn't able to see how many he has, but he's had the remedy. It's to reapply the banish, though. Uh, you want to make sure that you don't kill the head last, or else you are going to get a quake on everybody. And this quake hurts quite a bit. Also, the fact that everybody is vanish. I mean, there's really not a chance that you ever block quick anyways, as far as I know, but you're just going to lose that vanish that you spent so long putting on. That was a clean tier one. 
He was able to clean up the sap before he moved on to it. Looked like uh, Celis was actually sapped as well, so she was dropping some HP here and there. So for some reason, Machine is vulnerable to Doom, so you can take care of that one pretty quick. Uh, either going to be casting Mute or Siren here. Looks like Siren, so that's going to make magic pretty much useless for this fight. So now it's really Tiger that we worry about. Uh, Tiger is weak to Ice, so this is what the Ice Rods are for. And then from that point on, you go and beat up power, and then we're gonna beat up magic, and then we get to move on. This Once you hear the little sound where uh, Tiger dies, you're, you get a little sigh of relief for the rest of this. Alright, there goes Tiger now. Oh, I might have missed it to dine. Missed something in his. Yeah, I was just about uh, to ask that as well. It looks like he's starting over the statues. Wait, what happened? I think he missed something in the menuing. On a side note, this is like the third set of tumbleweeds I've seen Lion get. Which is really good. That's the, Those are the fights you want. Uh, you don't really need quick save, uh, because going through that last door is an auto save and it essentially does the same thing for you. Alright, here's 10. Oh! Does Muchiha kill. Yeah, it looks I like he kills magic first. Yeah, he was all vanished up, so he was like, ah, no, may as well kill power now and carry on with life. Alright, on to tier 3. Lion out there getting all the tumbleweeds. The 43. So this is why we want the Atma weapon, so we can do physical damage on Lady here. And uh, Celeste is the only one with sort of good HP. <laughs> now getting hit by something that, you know, lowers all of your HP, we have to keel her up before we attack more, because that's what the Atma weapon relies on. Then after that, we're going to be trying to get as close as we can to... I believe it's 20... 25,000 HP on rest because that's when he starts getting into Meteo spam territory and then we have to go for a bit of a a bit of a scary kill setup honestly but now you're basically counting damage you're making sure you counted that that meltdown that happened uh, trying to count every little thing he can still do meltdown so because he's like right on the edge of it right now a meltdown may Oh, never mind. We're just going for it. Unless I miscounted. Oh, I think we're just right on the tip of it right now. What a good tier 3. They really don't come much better than that, Fine. folks. I don't think the Trine even super matters because I think they use rods for the entirety of the rest Did of this fight. Did you use rods? Yeah, you use rods for the rest of the fight. That was a really quick tier 3. That was, like I said, they don't really get much better than that. That's just good. Didn't get, like, we got a Condemn, but I think it's on Edgar? Or is it on uh, the Red? Condemn is on the last uh, character. I think oh, it's, it's on Gogo. Go -Go. Okay. Oh yeah, I'm used to Edgar being... Well, I'm used to people being all over the place. It's fine. <laughs> you know, Aldine has to deal with his Vanisher being dead. Probably from getting punched in the face. Alright, so we do have a True Knight on 
I believe, Mog, so he should get in the way of the next Havoc Wing here. Yeah. And then we're basically going to be getting ourselves to push into... the Forsaken Zone here. Heal up Celeste, and... This is a bit of a pseudo-scripted fight from what I understand. If it goes well, if you can't hit the damage threshold, then you're gonna fucking cry. I, I don't know if Gogo dying there matters or not. I don't think so because he's not supposed to survive this anyway. Should be good. Oh, we got the, the weird nothing. And that's Jeez. GG's. Here you go. That was honestly a phenomenal tears. Was that was a phenomenal Kefka's tower. Other than like fishing, I think Mu had a very good world of ruin. Really, really good world of ruin, yeah. A 418? But that's insane. That's a really good time. That's like. Um, yeah, that's like three minutes off of his PB. Yeah, that's three. Yeah, no, four, uh, three and a half. Okay. Also, yeah, you can more than one. Dine's on a tier two here, looking like he's getting ready to kill Tiger, and Lion is just about to get ready to go into Kefka's tower as well. Yeah, his, I didn't actually see how Dine's tier 1 went because I was busy seeing if anything was going to go crazy in the, the final Kefka fight, which looks like it's, like I said, pseudo-scripted at the very least. So he's just trying to get the kill setup going on magic, and that should be... Unless he left power up as well. I thought I, I saw a physical happen. Yeah, it looks like he's trying to take out magic before he moves on to power. Which again, everyone's vanished, so 10 hits is not going to do anything. Lion Shop is actually going pretty good here, too. Just saw him flying through a whole bunch of it. Even getting rid of, like, Stuff like the growth egg and the whatever else, just to clean up those menus a little bit. They only sell for one GP, but if you have less stuff that you need to cycle through, it's so much better. Anyway, he's going to be moving on to tier 3 now. Coming out there with 11 holy rods. Ooh, yeah, he's a little short on money here, isn't he? He does not have a lot of money. Oh, no. Which means he must have had a really good grind. <laughs> 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 not too many cactuars. Yeah, he doesn't have anything to sell either. Well, despite all the healing that we did, Gogo ate dirt anyways. Sounds like Dinah's a lot to still take away at on... on Lady here. Once we got Lady out, we get to kind of continue on with life. But it's these... If, if we get into a White Wind spam, it starts to get really unfortunate. Since she only has 9,999 HP, and White Wind just does whatever her current HP is, Oh, good night, Gogo. Gonna go get punched in the Go-Go face. Just so this is usually how tier. Yeah, this is usually how tier three goes. <laughs> yeah. Is this it? There you Should go. be getting She's close. Finally down. Now
Now, now we can start tier three. Okay. Meanwhile, Lion's just starting Tempest Tower. So this is when we start doing the damage counting, which it's a little more awkward because we're not doing... Most of the other routes have like a max damage happening, so it's a lot easier to keep track. Here you actually are, you have a couple of nickel and dime damage is happening, so you have to kind of rock with that a little bit. Wasn't it also Gogo -Go for Muchiha that got Doom cast on? Yes. Yeah, it was also Gogo. -Go. Yeah, his Gogo -Go was in the fourth slot, though. Yeah. Uh. Just looking like, oh yeah, you too, huh? <laughs> oh no. Uh, so, I think we had a little bit of ATB leakage that happened. Oh! We blocked the room. Okay, this is fine. This is fine. Alright, everything's good. Edgar being dead here is whatever. Hey. As long as Setzer was revived after revived and healed after Doom. Because apparently if Edgar comes or Setzer is still at zero HP, he'll pop into this with zero HP. It's awesome. Which looks like he did. So he basically just takes over the place of Edgar here and throws a an elixir. So let's see if Dying can do the I, I never want to say it's actually scripted because in PR it feels like nothing's actually scripted, but in theory it should be. I had a little bit of an oh, I guess we're going to be a little bit awkward with the uh, this is going to be a little bit weird just because of uh, I think Celeste killed tier 3, didn't she? Yes. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna have to... Okay, yeah, so he's gonna have to take his time a little bit here. He's just waiting for that so we can get... Because we may have to kill with the Blazaga here. I'm sure Setzer can live this. I'm sure it's fine. Fine. He'll miss. It was close. Alright, there you go. GG's. I was a little bit worried because I wasn't G -G sure if the Blazaka was actually going to do the damage that it needed to there, but it did. I was a little bit worried about that. Yeah, just because the, the you want Celeste to be fully to be ready to go for the start of that fight. And because she was the one who did the kill on tier three, she was the only one with no ATB. And we're like, no, you're, oh, oh. Is Lion gonna get through? Oh, okay, no, he's not gonna get through it. Inferno, that's, uh, that's how Inferno goes if he doesn't cast Thunder Spells. No. Oh. Yeah, he was doing a lot of physicals on Lion there. That was really disappointing. Yeah. Yeah, someone's saying in chat RNG cost nine eight minutes. How brutal this game can be. Yeah, that uh, that sounds about right. I mean, Doom alone is. A couple, Goddess alone is a couple, like each fight is about two minutes, yeah it's about a two minute fight per, and then getting that really bad debilitator at the end. If turn debilitator. <laughs> yeah the game's like, but I gave you second try on the first one, yeah but you also enticed my character so thanks for that game. It's the the PR paradox. 
There we go. See? Second try. Not even worried. <laughs> Easy fight. So right now he's working his way up to like I said, Guardian is the, the least scary of the fights at least. Not to say it isn't scary, it's just the least scary. So the nice thing about, and one of the reasons why we grab Mog, A, he's actually pretty decent with magical power, but he also gets that Moogle Charm, which I guess we didn't really talk about, but Moogle Charm means you don't get any encounters, which is really nice in most of this run, because, uh, you know, we don't want encounters. A lot of really bad encounters, especially in Kefka Stamper. Having something that just basically voids all encounters is just fantastic. It does not basically not increasing your threat. So for every step, you're supposed to increase threat, and what this does is effectively gives you zero additional steps, so zero additional threat. Luckily, they took away a lot of uh, the no run flags in a lot of encounters. So, like, that's why we don't worry too much if we see GT behemoths or something like that, because in the SNES and the GBA, you can't run away from those and you have to fight the great behemoth, which is never fun. Here, you can actually just run away from them, which is nice. This lion's working up into his meat and potatoes of this area. I always get worried when I see an encounter happen in this room. The Gammas, those are fine. The Enochs, mm, not so much. So we'll see how, how this fight goes. Uh, like I said, we know. I know we swap between the Force Shield and the Thunder Shield just because the Force Shield has a lot of magic defense and evasion. Well, at least we got a preempt here. Whereas the the Thunder Shield just raises our actual defense by quite a bit, and I believe that also is what makes it so that we can absorb Magitek Laser. Now there is one attack here that we kind of worry about. Uh oh, we were still on smoke bomb. Shouldn't matter too much because we don't really need them much from this point on, hopefully. Okay, that's why we put on the thunder shield to eat that tentacle. But yeah, if stone comes through, you can get hit with uh, it, like a confuse, which is not fun in a fight where you're trying to end it as fast as possible because you don't want to get hit by the scarier stuff later on. And there you go. There goes our friend, Guardian. Onto the statues now. This is when the fun begins, as we've seen. I just hope that all the things that I keep saying about these fights end up being not true and Lion can just breeze on through. Or we can try and you stop right off the hop, but at least we got through it.
Metal Cutter is another one that you kind of worry about. Just because it's such a high physical damage, and I think we still have the Force Shield on. So it's going to do even more damage, because we have basically no physical defense. Especially with our HP values now, from this point on, we should be chilling. Should be coming to death here pretty soon. So from this point on, we're not too worried about this fight, luckily. There he goes. My boat's one down. Now we're coming up to everybody's favorite. I think this is the worst one is coming up here just because you can be doing it fine. You're like, all right, we made it through the worst part of it. And then you get the force and you're like, never mind, I guess I'll try again. I think that's the worst part about the, the Doom fight coming up. At least with these other ones, you're like, ah, I tried, but he just managed to kill me. Here you're just like, I'm still alive, I just, I can't kill it. Can't do anything, yeah. I think we're gonna try and use the Kieran strat here too to kind of interrupt some of the some of the counters as well. Kind of like what we did with Ifrit and Shiva. Yeah, Absolute Zero isn't a horrible opener. Actually, it's probably the nicest opener aside from nothing. <laughs> he went to fire. He was full on. Yep, he knew. He knew! Now, luck. Oh, okay, oh. I thought I thought you actually got to keep your ATB. If uh, you didn't get full ATB and then you freeze and unfreeze. Yeah, this is one of those fights where you want to roll everything through, but you have to wait to see if Mog actually gets hit or not. Should be okay with this. At least we're pretty healthy on X potions and elixirs so far. Alright, everything's looking okay so far. So there's one thing I actually haven't talked about at all either. Okay, we got Earth, good. Nice. So, the game's memory is a little bit jank in the sense of, say you used Cure on your party. Cool, good. Now the next time you go and pick either a Rod, or maybe you want to cast Blizzard or something, it's going to be like, oh yeah, the last thing you did, you did on your entire party. So we're just going to remember that you want to do that on your entire party, right? You're like, no. No, that is not what I want to do to my party. So then you have to like make sure that you remember what the last thing you did was so you don't go mashing through and accidentally go from curing your party to killing everybody. It's a little extra step in the memory that you have to kind of try and keep your your wits about. The one I always forget about is using slots with Setzer and leaving him on auto battle because it seems like he has a very high chance to do Joker Doom. Yes, you never see Joker, Joker Doom, Doom <laughs> until you just auto battle it through and it's like, ah, yes, we should do this one. And then boom, there goes my entire party. Oh man, come on, game. So how many DeBills is it going to take this time? We've had a two, we've had a four, and we've had an eight. Oh, 
Oh, we don't have poison. One, two. There's three. There's four. All right, I see we're going for the high count here. Oh no! It's the entice. Don't want to see that. Oh, this is just being it's a entice on today. Edgar. So I think he's just gonna hope that Edgar just dies. Lullaby is not. Actually, that is ideal. There we go. I don't know how many that was, but we got there. Somewhere between five and seven. Okay, so I don't know if Edgar is still enticed or not after this. He is! That's unfortunate. Oh no. Because now I don't think you can mimic. Yeah. Yeah. And you need the holy rods. You need the holy rod. So, uh, honestly, your best point at this point is just to either kill yourself quickly or or just do a quick game reset. Thank you, Goddess. Edgar out Goddess there trying to banish Goddess. Today. Nice, he broke himself. <laughs> That was a pretty funny ending to that fight. That's... We made it through this whole thing and we didn't even get a... Edgar flash in the party. Look at that! First try! Who would have thought? Who would have thought? That's all... That's just... I know it's supposed to be a good thing, but boy, it just feels like a kick in the teeth. Oh, he... she tried! <laughs> she she tried, tried again! He was able to block it. Early Quasar. Cool. Hopefully we don't see a second. Quasar, on the turns that it happens, is a two-third chance, and you have a one-third chance for Thundagas. Uh, shouldn't see it for a couple more turns? She should, in theory, be dead by then, but we did kind of... No, we should be okay, I think. There you go. This looks fine, yeah. Alright, now we get on to... Fun Tears. We've seen what it looks like when it goes well, and we've seen what it looks like when it doesn't go well. <laughs> <laughs> Just doing the, the final setup here. You uh, have to bring people up and... Actually, I think it works in the SNES too, where it just remembers what your HP and stuff is, because we actually enjoy going in with like a low HP 7 in SNES. Here, however, we don't really have a, an evasion tank happening, so full HP is good. The lion had to use the elixir on Ed there because he only had one high potion. I guess while we're going through this... Let's go ahead, give Lion their energy. Come on, Lion, take her home, buddy. Take it home, buddy. Yeah, while we're going through this, uh, if this run looks fun, but you want a little bit of a safer route, we do actually have a full comprehensive guide written up to uh, to kind of help you learn this run. We the last bit is mostly just coming in here with that forty-seven Celeste, and uh, there's a little more consistency in the final fights. Not. Not a terrible amount more, but at least you have more HP and more damage, so you don't have to rely on rod usage as much. It's a... It's not a bad time. Just 
Thought I'd throw that out there real quick while we see Kefka go on his little rampage here. Luckily, he misses that town with the, the Judgment Ray. Someone who likes their strokes so much is a little blind. I think he's in his little area of destruction. He doesn't care if he hits anything or not. He just knows that he could. Alright, so, like, so so the, the first couple tiers are really scary. Just because of the amount of damage and the amount of attacks it can get off. Luckily, everybody, I think everybody's killed the long arm on the first turn. With the, the death spell. Or break, depending on what they actually decide to go with. Because that arm can just start chucking shockwaves and stuff at you, and that's never a fun time. I think there's over 20 people on the general Discord call. Yeah, you physically have to scroll through it to see everybody. Yeah. The community all rallying to support Lion as the relay finishes. 74 hours of great Final Fantasy speedrunning. You love to see it. Yeah. From start you know who's to not finish. in the general Discord call? Dine. It's like the first time since the relay has started that Dine's not in the general Discord call. <laughs> yeah. He's hyping up his boy. Yeah, he's hyping up Lion. Let him do his thing. Alright, so tier 1. No reverse polarity turn 1. So that's good. Yeah, he did the vanish on Edgar and then realized he had to do a heal right away, so kind of took the vanish off of Edgar, but it's not like Edgar really has anything else to do anyways. Just making sure that the head dies ASAP. Get that haste going on. The haste on Celeste is actually super important for not just damage output, ooh, not just damage output, but uh... Also making sure that the tier 3 setup kill actually works. Otherwise you're a little bit too slow and then you eat the Meteo like, uh, like Dine did. I'm gonna have to look back and see what actually went wrong on that one though. It looks like this should be all she wrote for tier 1. Little bit trolly, but no disaster. Yeah, I don't think anybody else got hit but Gogo. He was like, that's my target. <laughs> Mimic this, buddy. Gogo is sitting here thinking, are you sure? I just had a really tough goddess fight and you're doing this to me now? Oh, uh, we do not, we do not have Siren. It's your Siren, buddy. Oh. Uh-oh. We're trying Siren to see if we have, uh, I think he's going to let it rock and see if he can get through this, but if magic wasn't the, yeah, he's going to ATB a lot. That's fine. Magic is going to be a big priority now. This is an attack from Tiger. This is why we hate Tiger. Drain's unfortunate. Oh, uh, sure. All right. Tell us I'm about not. This I think that loses our haste. Yeah. yeah he's, I'm, I'm yeah, trying to figure out why Drain did zero. Everything. Yeah, he's, he's just putting everything into giving magic down right now. Which is probably the best yeah. idea. Yeah, magic is very dangerous. It's 
So this is why we want to get that siren out, because as you can tell, magic either is a pussycat or is a huge problem. On the plus side, you get to see, oh boy. On the plus side, you get to see what on the fly routing looks like. It's actually handling this pretty well. This. Is okay. We're still in there. Still in there. Oh, oh no! No! Frozen, no! No! Oh, that's unfortunate. No, you can't northern cross us. We're already frozen. Well, that unfreezes us. Nice. Take the Faraga. He's going... He, he says, screw it. I'm going for the kill. What what a what a gambit. This dude. This dude. <laughs> well timed elixir there. Now time to get the rest of the party back up. No no, we're kill we're killing Tiger right now. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> Alright, there you go. Goodbye, Tiger. Holy That was intense. <laughs> that was. Okay, so... What do you have for Phoenix Downs? He's got seven. Okay, he's gonna have to make yeah, these check, count. Yeah, chat is right. This isn't the crazy chocobo anymore, it's just the mad chocobo. Holy... Okay, we can kind of... We can just kind of sit back for a little bit as he just he's gonna be getting vanishes up so that nobody dies to so the the 10 hits at the end here We should, we should be good now. He still got, I think, six Phoenix Downs, which... Knock on wood, should be good! That should be a good should amount. Should be okay. That being said, he also said yesterday in practice he went into Tier 3 with 10 Phoenix Downs and uh, died on Tier 3. So... so... No, bye, no. No, no, no. Please, Kefka, be nice. That was that was an amazing recovery. That gambit paid off and I love it. I loved every second yeah. of that. That was fantastic. <laughs> Alright, on to but, uh, three. Yeah, if you're wondering if it's safe to breathe yet or not, no, nah, we still got no. a few minutes to go. <laughs> <laughs> it's even, even the, I mean that was pretty bad, but All right, let it, please let us just kill Lady really quick. You've used White Wind way too much on Dine. We we can just we can just go ahead and pick away now, right? Okay, this White Wind at least shouldn't heal a lot. He did a lot of damage. Uh, okay. At least need to heal Celeste. I believe that just puts sleep on. Okay, Lady is still going. He's gonna take her out right away. Okay, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Um, you're in a spot now where it might be. Okay, yeah, yeah, he's waiting. Good idea. Good play. He doesn't want to waste too many Phoenix Downs, so wait until Gogo -Go can get the revive, and then Celeste can heal with her much higher uh, magic stat. 
How do we do the damage counting? Which honestly, I I wasn't doing at the beginning, so I'm already behind. So I'm just gonna just gonna trust that he's caught up on his damage, what he needs. Looks like he's going for not kill setup yet. So we're gonna be waiting for him to do an attack, and then we can kind of go ahead with everything. Okay, maybe he still needs a little bit more. He definitely doesn't want anybody to die. Alright, now we're going for it. Okay. Hoping that wasn't too much leakage. I'm a little bit worried about this, I'm not gonna lie. It's got a lot of thunder rods, at least. Okay, we're I good. Think that was right. a nothing. Right, made yeah, made it through. That was a nothing counter, which is the best one you can ask for. Onward to tier four. All right, here comes the final fight to end off the relay. So we kind of have a myriad of different, um, okay, okay, okay. I, I thought the game locked up for a second, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> oh no. Okay. He knows this strap more than I do. I'm I'm here to trust. Mimic, get the elixir out. Uh, maybe don't auto battle it. Just let. Okay, it should be fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Good, good, good. Could be okay from this point on. Uh, the meteor that happens is scripted. We just uh, saw in moves where you can sometimes just get the nothing. Game. Okay. Game. Now everybody can breathe! Yes! Everybody exhale. GG's <laughs> to all of the GGs. runners. GG's. It was fantastic. GG's to everyone. That was a great relay. What a show. I need to come down from uh, from the stress here for a second. <laughs> <laughs> that tier two, holy oh, shit! Oh, that tier two was something else. That was something else. I would like to get Lion in here so we can ask him about that. <laughs> that Lion and Lion. Can we not do that next year. <laughs> 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 It's mean! <laughs> I am I am a massive ball of stress. <laughs> Lion, what, Lion, what sort of stress? Lion, that was amazing! How did you feel going for that gambit on tier two? Uh, so I, I went to see silence and I was like, oh yeah, I don't have silence because uh, my magic point gain was really bad due to some of the fights I got. And I was like, okay, I've got siren. None. That's... All right. And so I, I asked Dine, I was like, should I just, like, off myself? And he's like, no, I think you can get through it. And I'm like, okay, we're going to see if I can get through it. So Critical Health Celis just kind of carried. That was terrifying, and I don't ever want to do it again. When I saw you not go for the heal, and you're like, we're going to kill Tiger no, right now. We're I'm gonna like, kill oh. Tiger. I'm not doing it. I'm not getting zombied. That is my big fear. <laughs> yeah, tier oh, the zombie lives too long. Tiger lives too long. Zombie becomes mm -hmm. quite the big issue. Yo, I'm glad I could uh, showcase some of the wild backups for when you forget oh. to do important things. Routing on the fly. I missed that tier three kill by 84 hit points. Oh. I'm so sad. Oh. <laughs> I was like, how did that not kill? Right? 
And I went looking through the VOD again, and I was like, are you serious? But you got the uh, you got the calmness block. Yeah. <laughs> if we, if we were going back to pyramid percent. <laughs> oh, that was a great showing, guys. That's on the on the one hand, it showed all the good things that can happen. It also uh, showed some of the bad things yeah. that can happen. I I Moo feel had, like it was a perfect showcase for PR. Moo had a lot yeah. of Moo survived a lot of the bad RNG early very well. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think Lion probably had, other than Atma, probably had the best floating continent. Yeah. My floating continent was awesome, and then Atma happened, and I was like, <laughs> Quake. Okay, I guess I reset. Oh, Quake again. Fantastic. Cool. Guess this is me now. Yeah, I never see that during practice runs, because why would you? And then it's like, yeah, okay. I miss you, Gaia Gear. <laughs> Come back to us. <laughs> back to Straggle Route. I, I do, I do want to say really quick. Thank you to both Dain and Uchiha. Uh, I feel really honored being able to run with those two just because they're, you know, two of the real legends for this game right now in general. Not just PR, but, but you know, Final Fantasy VI in general. And I uh, had a really great time, and I just want to thank everyone for uh, for that opportunity. So. Also, can we get a round of applause in the chat for the admins? Sereth, Local Man, Maelstrom. Maelstrom. Last couple of years, it's mm -hmm. even after 75 hours, like, everything's maintained to be at least two teams be extremely close and they've done a really good job with just scheduling trying to work around everyone like working around 60 runners and another 80 commentary is very rough business oh, and without them like we wouldn't be here showcasing the games for sure no it's actually amazing that they can get something like this with people in different areas of the world yeah with different schedules and managed to actually make something go pretty seamlessly through thank you thank yeah, trying you. to manage so many different time zones and languages is kind of amazing yeah yes thank you very much thanks thanks to the runners really and the commentators that were able to pull off the event um, in the first place so thank you to you guys um Absolutely. every every runner and every commentator that took part and uh even everyone that signed up to take part and put in some practice. Um, we, we really appreciate everyone, everyone's contribution. Um, I'm going to send some extra thanks, I suppose, as we're starting to wrap up. Um, I want to quickly thank the RPG Limit Break staff and Poexel for letting us host on their channel, uh, and all the moderators um, keeping the chat tidy. I think chat was really well behaved throughout most of the event, which is really cool to see. Um, and it's thanks to you guys that we're able to sort of keep a nice, friendly environment. Um, for anyone that missed any of these runs, I want to mention that the, we'll, the, the VODs will be up on YouTube, uh, probably within a few days or so. So all those runs that you might have missed, whether you're sleeping or work or whatever, you can catch up on those. Um, of course, they're on Twitch as well, but, you know, whatever, whatever your preference is. Um, as for the next event, um, keep an eye on probably the RPG Limit Break Twitter feed is probably the best place. Um, if we're doing any upcoming events, either next year, possibly something else, who knows, no plans right now, but uh, that's probably the best place to keep an eye on anything upcoming. Um, but that's about it. Before we wrap up fully, we're going to talk to some runners um, and commentators and other people that took part. Just grab some people from different games that want to you know, have a few words. Perhaps they didn't get a chance to talk throughout their runs and just want to say some things before we end the stream. Um, so first person talking is Desfero, who was just commentating FF6. Uh, yeah, but I wasn't really a runner for... I wasn't a runner for 6. Uh, I do want to learn Sketch eventually, but I know... Everything I know about 6 is osmosis through BD and Dine streams. Uh, I ran 13-2. Uh, uh, 13 2 is my favorite run as far as any percent is concerned from the trilogy. Uh, the RNG is definitely something else, but we have tools to mitigate it, uh, namely the drop mod that sets the monsters to 100% capture rate, which is very, very nice. And it's a very nice run, especially the, the two minute break that you get right in the middle. Like it set it, sets it up perfectly, and it's not an easy run, but it is the easiest 
out of the three games. Uh, we have a pretty small community for it. Um, so if you're interested, join the 13 server. Uh, we have lots of resources. Um, well, everyone is always available to help you get started. We have a few runners that already uh, show some um, interest in deer rusting and getting back on that horse. Uh, I honestly think it's a pretty fun run. Um, and of course, it has Chichu, so you can't go wrong with that. Uh, yeah, that's that's all I wanted to say. Thank you so much for having me. The relay is very stressful. I didn't get any sleep because I was very nervous about my run, but uh, this ending was very, very worth it. Thank you so much for having me here on the front seat. No worries. Thank you so much. And yeah, what a, yeah, this incredible ending. So yeah, thanks, Vera. Uh, 13 2, nice entry level 13 trilogy run, if that's, if that's interesting to you. Um, should have someone else next up now. I believe it's Vermilion or Foxy. Uh, okay, well, I'm not sure who's coming on next, but we're waiting for someone to talk. But yeah, what an incredible finish this was. Uh, man, like two minutes gap at the end. Like, and it's just taking it back at the very last minute. Uh, what a fantastic finish. Hello. Hello. <laughs> we do My have Foxy. Hello, I'm here. Sorry. Nobody told me what's happening. I just moved channels. Uh, so go ahead and go, Sarah. Sorry, I'm kind of like, I was unexpected here. Yeah, absolutely. How was your FF Relay experience? Did you have a nice time? Yeah, it was great. It's uh, fun as always. It's only my second Relay, so it's a real honor to be a part of it and this time to be selected for Final Fantasy X. Um, yeah, so uh, for those that did not know, I ran Final Fantasy X with these uh, cutscene remover and RNG fix. Uh, it was a great time. Vermilion definitely had the most entertaining run while Hiroshige uh, shook things up a little bit with his, uh, you know, um, homebrewed route to say the least, but I think we all had a great time. Uh, lots of fun moments to review if you want to go check out the VOD. Um, uh, overall, Final Fantasy X, obviously great community. Um, it's really active thanks to the Cutscene Remover mod, uh, just in general. Um, there's lots of people always asking questions, new runners are always welcome, and everybody's really welcoming. I would say even though a lot of people tend to uh, complain, or I won't say complain, but uh, sometimes get frustrated with the RNG fix mod, it's a great way to learn the run, honestly, and kind of not worry about um, high-level manip or those sorts of things that are kind of more traditional with uh, some of the runners that you may see today. But it's definitely a great way to get your feet wet and to actually you know, understand what you need to do and really kind of switch it up so you're not just you know, constantly running off notes or something like that. So. Uh, yeah, come join us via the Discord on the speedrun.com page or uh, through any of the other, I guess, just Final Fantasy Discords that you can see. But thanks for joining us, guys. It was a great relay and hope to be part of it again next year. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Yeah, cutscene remover helps a lot for sure. Makes a nice entry level. Makes it a nice three, three and a half hour run down from like nine hours. It makes it so much more accessible. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see who we have next up. Leave is Brainbooks talking about Tactics Advance, which feels like forever ago. Hello, um, I'm Brainbucked. I'm here to talk a little bit about FFTA, Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, if you saw it, it was a nice run. Um, I'm glad we were able to show it off because it's the 20th anniversary of FFTA. So I'm really glad it got in. We had some really nice commentators. Thanks for. Uh, that um, the grind was, yeah, if you don't like the grind, we definitely have a category like pamphlet or the randomizer if you just want to play through it. Uh, that's accessible for everyone. Yeah. Thank you for having us, I guess. <laughs> awesome. Thanks a lot. Yeah, we, were, uh, we were blessed to have you, I think. Uh, first time running Tactics Advanced. Yeah, I learned it for the relay. It's really nice and cozy. Yeah, yeah. There aren't many runners, so it's really cool to have uh, a new game. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Awesome. Thanks, Brainbugs. Thank you very much. 
I believe next we have Rooster talking about either 12 or 13. I'm not sure. We'll find out. Hi, Rooster. Hey, how's it going, Sarath? Going pretty good, thanks. Well, uh, thanks for having me. This has been a great relay. I had a ton of fun. Uh, got to commentate two games and play another, and I guess I'm going to be talking about two of them. So I guess first up I'll mention Final Fantasy XII, that was the game I ran. Uh, my love will always be the vanilla version of the game PS2, but we have an awesome community and we run all kinds of different versions and categories. Uh, TZA is an interesting one with the speed up. It's really frustrating because things go fast very quickly when you have four times speed up, but the four times speed up also makes it a very accessible game if anyone wants to come and give it a shot. We've got notes and everything, community super supportive, including myself and a few other runners who are going to be showing up soon. Could have also talked about this, but yeah, I love FF12. And then for FF13, uh, this community is huge and really awesome, and really want to shout out the runners. The Kyrun has been just like making a storm for years now, and it's really nice that we finally have M and Zero, who were uh, finally able to keep up with him and put up a competitive race. And these the runs that were in this relay would have been world records by like 15 minutes a couple of years ago, and they just pull it out like it's nothing. But our community is also really big, and uh, we've got some of the best notes in the, in the, that I've ever seen. Just really well done and makes the game super accessible. Anyone can play it and give them speedrunning a shot. And yeah, I love both these games, and I would love to come back again next year. Awesome. Thanks a lot. So yeah, FF, FF13 gets kind of a, a rep for being really difficult and one of the hardest FF runs, but also yeah, probably and, one of the most satisfying when it goes well. Oh, absolutely. And you can just sit there grinding a single PC2 or orphan fight for hours, but uh, once you sort of understand how the game works, you can work through things yourself and it really becomes really fun. Hmm. Also kind of forgiving too, right? Because you can just retry battles. And... Yeah, that's that's something that FF12 doesn't have, but FF13. <laughs> Anytime you mess up, you can just retry. There's historically been a few places where you can mess up a menu and then you are in a bad position, but other than that, it's uh, any dodge, any fight, just retry. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot. Um, let's move on yeah. to the next person. That's weird. Thank you. Moving right along. Now we have Adrian talking about Crisis Core, which was the opener. Uh, hello, hello. How is it going? Uh, yeah, so first of all, first of all uh, thank you, everyone. Um, I've been following the release for so many years, and this year I had the opportunity to be part of it. So thank you for that. For, for letting me and yeah crisis core it was the opener <laughs> that was a huge responsibility not gonna lie <laughs> but we managed we managed and we have a really a really nice uh, race it was pretty close uh, till then i managed to come back for tomberry uh unfortunately i and for mock uh had some troubles in the safe code and he lost some time, but it's okay. We all did a, a great job. It was so fun. It was an honor as well to to race against uh, two friends, two good friends. Also, it's an honor to to be a part of these all stars uh, runners, you know, <laughs> in all the teams. So thank you, thank you, everyone, and thank you, especially to the staff for such a good event. Congratulations, congratulations, and congratulations, Team Mock. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, congrats, Team Mock, indeed. Awesome. Moving on to the next person. I'm not sure which game we're talking about now. Losing track. Uh, okay, Sony, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, so I'm Sonny Rathalvin. I did commentary for Final Fantasy 2. Uh, I actually do run the PSP version of both Final Fantasies 1 and 2, and I was going to talk about both of them. Uh, the FF1 and 2 communities are a pretty good size and have a lot of companionship, a lot of friendship. The, I came into the community for it about four to five years ago learned both of the games poor scythe helped me all the way through on learning both of them and it was an absolutely amazing time and as for the relay this is actually the first time i've helped out with the relay and 
absolutely enjoyed it. It was a massive blast. So, Sarath, you and everybody that organized this, thank you guys so much for doing so. Um, absolutely come join the FF1 and FF2 communities. We have so many guides up to learn each version of the game, and you can just have an amazing time. But yeah, that's that's about all I got. Awesome. Thank you so much. And thank you for joining. It's been it's been a blast. Yeah, no problem, and thank you for having me. No worries. Hopefully we'll see you again next year. Absolutely. Awesome. Moving right along, we have Coiny. Good afternoon or evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Coiny93. I was one of the commentators for Lightning Returns, unfortunately, because we were on the first day. Some of our runners had to go back to work today, unfortunately. But um, I previously have run in relays for type zero and uh last year actually got to run uh, final fantasy 10 because we did the category no sphere grid um lightning returns is it was a, a fantastic bunch of runs uh, i know we talked about it a bunch hopefully if you didn't catch the run you'll catch the vod but unlike the other 13 games is a bit more action-packed it still has the atb system but you're kind of more actively hitting your moves chaining them together uh a little more in real time instead of queuing them up um has some fun new tech and can seem a little bit daunting because we love to talk about how difficult the final boss can be. But this community has people that have really stuck around through all the time. I learned the run probably back in 2016, 2015 with the 12 hour challenge. Um, and I know that Zephyrs who commentated with me, he was running the game back then too. And we're still sticking around. We may not be actively running the game, but if you want to give it a go, reach out to any of us because people from all throughout LR history can tell you all kinds of fun alternatives if say you don't want to do something like try the out of bounds tricks we had I actually de-rusted a route that doesn't use those and it might not be the fastest but it's still pretty comparable so very fun game uh, interesting um, add addition to the uh, 13 trilogy and uh, I will just say as far as overall relay participation uh, I sort of echoed this last year just go for it uh, type zero is a side game, as everyone knows, and no sphere grade is like an odd category. If you have something you're passionate about, just find other people who also run it and find enough people to just pitch it to the relay. You never know, maybe you'll get in. And uh, this is an awesome community. Thank you very much for letting me participate, um, admins, and thank you very much to the chat. You guys were awesome. Uh, I was here <laughs> a lot of the weekend. And uh, yeah, this was a great event. Awesome. Thank you so much. But yeah, you know, I mean, you mentioned just go for it, right? And, and the 12-hour challenge is, is a good example of that. You just Absolutely. Yeah, I also learned 13-2 and... with the 12-hour challenge, and it's just just pick a Final Fantasy game and just go for it. Mm -hmm. Take a weekend or so and just try to learn a run, do a run of something. And the goal isn't to be the fastest, it's just to try and finish a run. Absolutely. Awesome. Thanks so much. Thank you. Now we're going to be moving on to Easily End Keeper. We're going to be talking about FF9. Hello, Keeper and Easily. Want to introduce yourselves? Hi, Hi this is... Uh, oh, sorry, Easily. Hi, this Let is Keeper DK. And uh, I'm Easily. Hi. Uh, Keeper, and you want to go? Sure, yeah. So I, I think we both just wanted to say thanks uh, first to the organizers, uh, Sarath and, and Chris and Maelstrom, who put on a, a phenomenal performance. This was my first time doing the relay, and it was so cool to see all the work they, they do. Uh, on behalf of the community, uh, thank you to all the fellow runners, especially uh, Easley and Pete, my fellow nine runners. I thought everyone did a phenomenal job, like truly, and acquitted themselves super well and, and showed off all the cool stuff we do to execute these speedruns. And yeah, thank you uh, to everyone in chat, uh, whether you're active in chat or you were lurking or just watching at any point over the weekend, uh, feeling all the love and support when we were running was just the coolest experience for me. Uh, and yeah, I, I thought uh, the nine team, we really did a great job just kind of showing off our run. Pete and Easley both put on great performances. Uh, I was really thrilled with my run. It actually ended up being my second fastest run ever. Uh, there was a spot there where I actually, it was actually world record kind of flirtatious there for a moment. I made a couple mistakes on disc three uh, that, that took me a couple minutes behind that, but it was pretty cool to put up that kind of time. And uh, yeah, the last thing I'd say is just plug our community real briefly. Um, if you're out there in chat and you're thinking, man, speedrunning seems cool, uh, FF9 is a great game to try. Uh, we've got a new uh, cutscene remover mod that lets 
lets you play the game in about four hours. It's a really easy speedrun to learn, difficult to master, but easy to learn. So you can go to speedrun.com slash FF9, uh, join our Discord, grab the cutscene removal tool, and uh, yeah, this could be you uh, uh, this time next year running nine. So yeah, thanks again to everyone. Uh, I 100% want to second everything uh, Keepers just said. It was a fantastic experience. Both Keeper and myself are very, very new to the run by comparison to a lot of people. Um, Keeper did absolutely phenomenally. I, I was looking at his run thinking he was going to get world record. It was close. Um, Pete was fantastic. My own run was not great and I found a couple of, um, let's just say I found a glitch I didn't know existed and had to reset from it, but it was fine. Um, the Nine community, I, I especially want to give a massive shout out to personally, because if not for the welcoming tone of Nine, I don't know if I would be running, speedrunning so much. So if you're ever looking for a community that is fantastic, Nine is by far the best community I've found. Um, so I would recommend, but thank you very much to all the organizers, all the viewers, all the runners. It's been absolutely incredible to do, and I hope to be here next year as well. Thank you. Thank you for joining. I, I did miss most of the FF9 from sleeping, but uh, I've heard good things, so well done. Uh, all right, moving on to the next person. I believe we have Amar going to be talking about Final Fantasy VIII, as well as his relay experience. Hey, Amar, want to introduce yourself? All right, hi, I'm Amar. I run, uh, I have run Final Fantasy VIII, 9, 10, 10, 2. Um, I run a plethora of games, but uh, I did some commentary for F8 this year uh, alongside a bunch of fantastic people, Cyanide Sugar, uh, Soph, Quetzington, uh, and I feel like I am missing someone and feel awful, but um, GG's also to Sayo, Sonic, and for uh, Zaiden for uh, Irinor. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm so sorry, Irinor. Um, but um yeah, I did. Uh, uh, just want to thank them for having me on. Um, yeah, come check out FF8. It's really fun. Uh, we have a plethora of um, platforms you can run on. We have both a um, like the PSX version, uh, 2013 Steam, and we also have HD. Uh, we have for PC, we have a cutscene remover, both in English and in French. We have tons of practice resources a wealth of knowledge in the community um a few different routes that you can choose from uh it's it's a really fun run glad that uh glad that i picked it up and uh glad that uh th that it's a part of the relay every year it, it, this year was really exciting towards the end uh with all the altamesia deaths don't typically see that but uh it provided some uh, excitement and that was really cool to see this year so uh, yeah I want to thank the relay and the organizers for having us and for allowing us to represent the community thank you thank you yep FF8 is a nice run uh, quite, a, quite a chill run yeah say. very chill very chill <laughs> <laughs> alright awesome moving on uh, to the next person we have Harvey, I believe, to talk about Final Fantasy IV. First time we had FF4 in the relay. Uh, what's up, Harvey? Hi, Seraph. Yeah, um, I wanted to quickly jump in again and uh, say thank you to all the organizers that made 3D happen. Uh, it was the th when I started getting into 4.3D, no one else was running it. Uh, the time back then was at four hours and ten minutes and i poured in a lot of hours and to translate the japanese routes and try to get something going to get a speedrun route going and i did and with that i also kind of spawned um, a couple of people who were interested in the game uh, namely bandage quas and even chris tenarium which i was surprised that he showed interest in the game due to how uh, generally the other versions were liked or preferred, should I say. Um, so to be able to show this off, not only at a marathon ESA, but also to have it at a FF Relay, which those two were the big two things I wanted to achieve with this version. Um, 
it's an absolute joy to see. And I want to thank everyone who contributed to the route. Um, I want to thank everyone who has learned to run. Uh, and yeah, th thank you again to everyone who was watching and I hope you all enjoyed the FFO run. As for me, um, I am now moving on, or should I say moving on, I'm going back to 12 PS2. And because there were so many FFs in this relay that I still haven't played, I am now in dire need of catching up on FFs I still haven't played. So yeah, um, that's it for me. Thank you all so much for watching and uh, see you until next relay. Awesome. Thank you, Javi. Appreciate you joining. And uh, I think I said first time FF4, but I obviously meant first time for PC 3D. Yeah. Um, thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, moving on to the next person, we have Nikki. Hello. Hey, Sarahs. Hello. How are you doing? Ah, happy that I can finally join. Last year we were a bit later with uh, the tears and the emotions. But yeah, um, I'm Nikki. Uh, I'm running 20 different FFs. This is my eighth relay and six different uh, game. And yeah, this, this year I was running Final Fantasy 3. Um, for those of you who don't know, Final Fantasy 3 has, I think, over the years seen the most amount of different categories. It's always been difficult to find runners, and it's always been super RNG heavy, and often so many things have gone wrong. But this year, you were able to see the Pixel Remaster version, and all three runners have shown an amazing, just amazing runs. It was one of the most consistent runs of all of them, which is just amazing to think about. Um, huge shout outs to um, fellow Japanese runner Rupan and Kama, who is just for the relay picked up the game and put on an amazing time. So, yeah, it's always great to see how many people come together, learn new speed games, and looking a bit forward since, yeah, we had FFTA this year. Uh, if we can make it happen, FFTA 2 is going to come next year. I'll try to make it happen. <laughs> Big promises. <laughs> awesome. Thank and you. yeah, if anyone is interested in running FF3, um, our community is small, but I have written a really long guide, uh, which um, the first person Zik has already tried learning it with it, and he gave me a big thumbs up. So if you're interested in learning the game, we have a good source that you can use. Yeah, that's awesome. It's awesome that people learn runs and are able to participate in the relay, you know? If you put your mind to something, you can learn it in just a few months and get good enough and still show up for the relay. Like, yeah. Some crazy dedication and really appreciated. Cool, thanks, Nikki. Um, last up, we have Lion, who just finished playing Final Fantasy VI. Wants to share a few words. Hey, Sarah, thank you. Um, so this is and this is my third year, I think, in being involved with the Relay. Um, my second year running uh, Final Fantasy VI both times, so two years back. Uh, funny enough, it was the same three runners, myself, Muchiha, and Dai Nuitari, uh, on the same three teams. Uh, on myself on Shoko, and uh, Muchiha and Mog, and Dain on Tonberry. So it was a real honor for me to, uh, to run this back with them a little bit. A little bit different result this time, and I'll, you know, try to try to come out and stronger for next time. Um, I I just wanna I wanna thank everybody uh, in our community, in the Final Fantasy VI community, a bunch of really you know really great knowledgeable people, uh, very welcoming, very chill, always always happy to introduce new people to the game and the runs. Um, it's expanded a little bit thanks to PR and bringing some new people into the game, and a lot of us have had. Uh, some mixed thoughts on Pixel Remaster, but as as we've all kind of put time into the routing, um, myself, uh, Dine, B Dude, Nightshade, um, and then Shigeru and Mujiha uh, from the Japanese side, and anyone I am forgetting, I apologize uh, profusely. But there's been a lot of work done on this route, um, still a lot of tweaks being made, and and we're finally getting something that we're a little bit happier with. 
Um, and it's definitely made it a bit more fun. So, so having the dynamics of this pixel remaster and then fives, we got to show off a little bit um, of the of the big changes. Uh, it's been a lot of fun, at least for me. Um, and and again, I just I want to thank everyone for this opportunity. I'm more of a theory crafter and, and a route uh, developer at this point. I've kind of been back away from the speedrunning aspect. So for me, this was a little bit of an opportunity to get back into it. Um, but it's always a blast. The relay is always fantastic. Uh, I wholeheartedly encourage anyone who's even remotely interested to reach out, get involved in these communities, and you know, get some information, find the game you like, and, and get involved. The relay is what got me into speedrunning uh, in general, and, and it's just a really great time. And yeah, that's uh, I think that's about it. So thanks to everyone. Thank you, admins. Thanks to everyone watching. Awesome. Thank you, Lane. And yeah, as you mentioned, like there's different ways to get involved, right? Like not everyone has to run a game. Just pick a game you like, and you can still get involved without even playing it. You can route the game or develop tasks or whatever. You know, there's plenty of ways to sort of help out with various research and just suggestions and ideas to improve the uh, the run. But yeah, that's it. Thank you, everyone. Uh, any closing thoughts from either Chris or Maelstrom now that you're here? Um, nothing that's really already been said. I guess just want to say again, you know, thanks to everyone, not only everyone who's participated, but everyone who watched from home, um, everyone who, you know, supports these runners outside of this event and keeps the community going, because uh, without you, none of this would be here, you know. Um, if we didn't think there's people involved that wanted to watch this event, it wouldn't keep happening. So it's really great uh, that we have that support. Um, I also want to give a huge shout out to the Japanese Restream team. Uh, we've had a Japanese Restream running for this entire event, and that's been a really great way to reach kind of another su like subset of the community that doesn't always get kind of as much attention as we'd maybe like. Uh, there's some really great Japanese runners out there, and they've they've also put on a, a great kind of Restream and managed to get a whole bunch of commentators for different games, uh, which has also been really great to see. Um, yeah, don't think I had much else. Um, I will say, uh, I've had a few specific things uh, thrown my way, as opposed uh, with regards to, uh, you know, well dones and thank yous and all of that, and I appreciate it, but also massive thank you to Sereth and Maelstrom for doing this with me. It's been a lot of fun, it's been a lot of work, but I appreciate them very much. And uh, yeah, that is the one nice thing I'll say to you all year, Zareth. We can <laughs> go back to where we were. <laughs> oh, I'll cherish that. <laughs> no, thank you too. It's been it's been, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, thanks both. Cool. So I think we're pretty much that's pretty much it from us. Um, it I think is. we were maybe trying to find a raid target. I don't know if we still had one. Um, looks like our original idea is still on, so I guess we'll do that. Okay. That's oh. good. Raid message will be the usual, I suppose. Team Mog wins. Use the Mog emotes if you have them. If not, throw in something else. Throw in a little dance. Who knows? Yep. Throw in a little dino dance. That's been my favorite emote. I love the dino event. dance. Dino right. dance is pretty good. Yeah. Alright, thanks again everyone for watching. We'll see you next time. See you next time.